Hello, hello, hello. We are playing a little back on this channel and with Final Fantasy 14. And yes, I know I'm long overdue with starting with Dawn Trail. I just had, yeah, different priorities, really, and stuff I had to take care of. So. With work and everything, I didn't really get around to playing Final Fantasy XIV much yet. But, at least for today, I'm finally back and I do really want to start with Dawn Trail. And we will be playing this a bit more regularly. Uh, at least for as long as I will be playing through the Dawn Trail story. I'm just not sure how regular we will be doing this, or how frequently, let's say it like that. Um, but yeah, I do plan on playing this a bit more, because I really do want to play for the Andre. Uh, did we have something like... Oh yeah, of course. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I've been looking for exactly. Take all. Give me that. Yeah, so also we'll have to, uh, yeah, kind of get, get back into it a bit more again. That is already. I'm not sure if I still have like the proper muscle memory for everything yet. Did you stream back on the 18th of July? Uh. I don't know why. Um, I didn't really get to, uh, get to uh, had time to swing on Twitch this week, so yeah. <laughs> ah, have you played a birthday plan from my end? <laughs> also, we did get a new mount. I actually want to check what was it. Okay, it's just a uh, fucking freaking Big Mac. I, I guess why not? <laughs> not really what I enjoy the most time, but hey. Why did War Mechanic disguise as an airship? An airship disguised as a bipedal War Mechanic, I would if you prefer. <laughs> but I'm not super hot, I guess. Okay. Happy with that. But. My priority. Don't try story. This fee is beefed when using the for tools. Oh, they changed the tool type a bit. Okay. I don't think I will look around too much about it, like all the usual stuff. I just want to go right into the story. Explore. Welcome back, Tamar. Just head word from Erinville. It seems he's managed to secure passage to Twell aboard a guildship vessel. Why don't you wait in the main hall while I go and inform your trail companions? It should only take a moment. Oh. New quest theme. Let's check it out. But Jigga gave us the good news. We've made ready to set sail at a moment's notice. But the only one yet to arrive is Ermel himself.
Ah, you are here. It uh, took some persuasion, but the cleaner's guild ship has granted us places aboard a vessel bound for Turel. There will be other passengers, researchers and artisans and the like, so we need to share a deck space. That's fine, I will. I doubt anyone expected we'd have a ship all to ourselves. They're not casting us off yet, so if you have any lingering concerns, now is the time to watch them. I wouldn't call it a concern, but everyone's still clear on what it is that we'll be doing to our yes. We haven't forgotten. The nation of Turiolal is in the midst of deciding its next ruler. As your chosen allies, we shall assist you during the rite of succession and support you a bit to become Thorn Servant. In addition to that, Avano and I have another objective. As part of its reconstruction, Galamal seeks ways to reconcile and re-engage with its neighbors. By visiting Tura, we hope to learn more about how its myriad cultures interact with one another, how they find common ground, develop strong ties, the sort of insights that might help our friends in Ilzebal. But we be so to score in our own time, you can be reassured that we give the contest all due attention. That's all I guess. Otherwise, you're welcome to do as you like. You want to find out about your grandfather, right, Cryo? As far as we could determine from the old missive I found, he had been tasked with investigating the gold city by your father, the Dawn Servant. Yet oddly enough, we have no record of the investigation in our archives, and nothing to explain the earring which accompanied the letter. Thus, for reasons both official and personal, I should very much like to get to the bottom of this mystery. I'm sure there will be a chance to speak with Papa. You can get your answers right from the source. I look forward to meeting him. In any case, you're not the only one with interest in the City of Gold. The Gold City is a children's bedtime story, and part of this expedition only because the third promise has commanded that I serve as guide. Still playing the part of a stoic servant, I see. What of you? Don't you dare tell me you've changed your mind. <laughs> Why would you ever change our mind when you want to go for another adventure? I say and let the wind take us as she places, definitely. I also like how they like give like a short recap of what our goals for this new adventure are. Mm. Where's that? We won't go. Uh, we won't get far wallowing in the shallows. Right then, if are we still committed to the journey, then I say we make ready to depart. Says here's what I'm going to going on again. I just checked it out for a moment. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. I'm just talking about your house decorations, as it looks like. You guys there, uh, the others have already left for the harbor. We are not in danger of missing the boarding call, but perhaps we should be on our way as well. I hope they actually like, have a lot of voice lines, so I do not appreciate they immediately starting off with me having to read all of it. I do want some voiced cutscenes, definitely. Savoring the moment? There we go. You feel your excitement, your eagerness to explore the unknown. Well, for once, the fate of the world doesn't rest on our shoulders. We might even get a chance to enjoy ourselves. That would be nice. Do not be so quick to relax. Oh, I really do like this theme. 
was I'm sure if the volume room is fine on stream. Please do tell me if I should like make it louder or not. Oh, Tural may seem but a short sail away on a map. The vast seas between brim with peril. The treacherous waters of Shades Triangle alone have claimed countless vessels. Even following the safe route plotted by Admiral Bufiswin herself, this will be no pleasure cruise. Perhaps, but my voyage here was uneventful enough. Disappointingly so. <laughs> Either way, the two of you have first-hand experience, which will be of great comfort in the days ahead, I'm sure. You definitely. <laughs> What's with the sound for that turn? That's so cute. I trust you have everything you need. I mean, I should have, I think, at least. Does our ship cast off from the docks? We sail west, as Catenram did some 80 years past, bound for the new world, known to her children as the continent of Tural. Adventure awaits. I already get goosebumps because I'm like hyped for playing for the story. <laughs> Wait, Papa, when this contest is said and done, it'll be your daughter who sits the throne. Me! What la mat! Especially, it's just even more weird, especially since it's so warm right now. Getting goosebumps. Why it's warm, it's weird. getting hyped up for it like Jesus <laughs> this is with all the vocals the vocals on this theme are even cooler if it's one of the, uh, the version of the vocals I also immediately like the upgrades to the graphics they did. The characters look a lot more pleasant than already. Smooth sailing so far. Aye, so far so good. But this sea, she's a fickle one. Calm one moment, blowing a gale the next. Also, you're not anymore seeing all the individual pixels on like the outfits as much anymore, which is really nice. I'll take my rest while I can. Then. And actually, you see a lot of detail and texture of the clothing. When you're like looking at Urban Will's clothes in specific, quite nice. I already noticed the outfit I'm wearing hasn't been like updated it's uh, as nicely yet. What seems an age ago now. And we've seen naught but open water ahead. I knew Tural was far, but it's another thing to really know. Just like as a side note, like in terms of like graphic updates, um they're not totally done yet. They are like progressively gonna be like improving um, certain equipment sets and such in with textures and such throughout like the runtime of 
Dontre. So yeah. Speaking of which, some of our fellow passengers have made this trip before. Several times, in fact. I was able to learn a few things about Tuliolal and the Rite of Succession. Since we still have a long way to go, why not have a chat with them yourself? I'm sure you have questions of your own. <sighs> Did you look out across these same waters, Grandfather? Well, probably. If you went to to well. Also, I think I will be stumbling upon the word Turiola a bit, uh, a bit more in the future when trying to pronounce it. <laughs> it's such a weird, like, unusual name for me. <clears throat> hmm. Oh, this will be my first visit to Turiola. Function Farchantain's the name. I was working at S Times Aesthetics in Ulda, you see, but my employment with them uh, came to an end. That's why I visited Charlion in the hopes of starting over while I was attempting and failing to find a new job. I seized a chance to board this vessel when I overheard room for another passenger had suddenly opened up. I'm told the Dawn Servants welcomes all regardless of origin, and so Toliola seemed like the perfect place to begin anew. Hopefully things will be better this time. Well, good luck with finding a job, I guess. <laughs> I do know the struggle of finding one. I see you in Orosia before. You are great in the famous heroes. Gav had enough of playing the simpleton. There was a time when we took great planes to maintain the deception, but with more of your arrows since coming to dwell, it's, it's become impractical. Besides, my mercenary days are over. Too many of our warbands have fallen, and so we had home to lick our wounds. My story? Well, since you asked, I wanted to retrace the historic journey of the great Canton Ram. You know, the first year I was in to set foot on Tura? Almost 80 years ago? The Mo uh, Momoja's leader is said to have welcomed Katanaram with open arms and sent him home with a bounty of silverware as a token of their friendship. But the real treasure was the crops he brought back. Hobbitos, tomatoes and corn, which spread across the Orsia like wildfire. This kind of adventure led to a culinary revolution. The tales say Katanaram returned to Turel several times after that, but his ship vanished during his last recorded voyage and he was never heard from again. A demon seasoned explorer like him could meet such an end is testimony to the ocean's peril. Uh, two more to go. An adventure, I presume? I'm a merchant myself, based in Ulda. Specialty imports and exports. You also and to rally both. If this is your first crossing the sword, as they say, do remember the social morals of Eosa are not necessarily the same as those over yonder. Consider this, it is not uncommon for the various races to be referred to instead by the names of certain clans. For the Mikorda, the he Hetzaro, the Rough Girl, the Ixbrel, not because every member of a given clan is of the same race, mind, but because many individuals of said race are associated with the clan. A fair assumption in certain cases, but take care not to give offense. Interesting. Good advice, I would say. Do you want to make a wager? We're taking bets on who will be set next in the Dawn Servant's shiny chair. There are four Kalema claimants in the right of succession. Your young Muglamad being one of them, of course. But from what Mamojo Bloke was telling us, the other three are all strong contenders. Not too many keen to risk their coin on the third promise. Hmm. Alright.
Did you learn anything of interest? When heard about a clan's name, we should have Lou Wuglamat and Aaron will teach us the ones we should know. Actually, it's getting a little chilly up here on the deck. Let's all give him the cabin. Sure, let's do so. It's looking a bit stormy outside, I would say. We're in for a proper storm, it seems. Wuglamad <laughs> 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 is apparently getting quite seasick. How's your stomach any better? I don't know what you mean. I don't get seasick. Yeah, you certainly don't look like you would get seasick. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Come on, Wuglama. I'm just feeling a little nauseous, is all. Mm hmm. Isn't that what seasickness is? <laughs> Erendil, you were born in Tyral, yes? Do many of you ever live there? The Shetona, as my people are called, have settlements mainly in the north. In Shapturaj. And your family? I know nothing of my father. Not even his name. Interesting. As for my mother... <sighs> What's happening right now? Oh dear. <laughs> it just sounds like chaos is going on. <laughs> lend what aid we can. Hmm. It's interesting that Google Maps can spring I up to action, though. The ocean rage with such fury before or since. Oh, this is definitely the bad storm. <laughs> the hell? The heaving waves tossed our ship about like a toy, sending sailors tumbling. The dauntless Alize, quick to the rescue, was almost lost to the sea herself. to deploy the vessel's magical defenses and thereby shield us from the lightning. At least it can be useful. What an extraordinary life she must lead to be able to operate such a device with practiced ease. <laughs> <laughs> Wuklama, too, threw herself into the rescue efforts, though one might have mistaken her for another soul in distress. <laughs> well, we do seem we will be able to survive this, though. <laughs> At the time the unruly seas had calmed, our strength was all but spent, and we had yet to even glimpse the shores to Rath. Or at least it wasn't boring for us. In retrospect, of course, that battle against the storm would prove a fitting prelude to the coming contest for the throne.
Here you can see that this outfit hasn't been updated yet, sadly. I wish I would look for my camera if I had like any outfit which has been updated. Joining us for some fresh air? Mm -hmm. Seems my belly has settled along with the weather, but I'll feel much better once we're on solid ground. Ugh. Can't be much farther now, can it? Seabirds. You can see that, yeah. Land must be near. You need only hold out a while longer. For a dark moment, I thought the ocean might swallow us. Glad to have my pessimism proven wrong. In other good news, I examined the sailor who took a fall, and he's faring well. I'm sure he'll make a full recovery. Good news indeed. If all's well, then we needn't delay in launching the landing boat. Ships have to lower anchor some way from shore. Too close, and they risk having their underbellies ripped open by the reefs that crowd Toliolan's coasts. Come. I mean, they do not want that. What we were paid to do couldn't hardly set you drift halfway. If anything, it should be us thanking you for helping us through that beast of a storm. <laughs> You're welcome. As a matter of fact, everyone started to fancy your chances in the contest. <laughs> At this rate, we won't be able to lay wages no more. <laughs> Then I better not let you down. Oh, easy stomach. Easy. <laughs> We're the last to board. If there's nothing left to say, then let's shove up, shall we? Let's go. Hmm, the well, water is still doing really pretty. Ah, blue seas, clear skies, and boundless possibilities. I dare say our destination will soon be in sight. Enjoying yourself for a change? Ah, this is really the trailer cutscene, I think. Just in engine now. Yeah, look, my friends. Behold the scene of our next great adventure. At last, we have come to the land you call the New World. To my home, Tura. Mm. 
Definitely lo already looks pretty from afar. music. Oh, this sounds really nice. The city, not gonna lie, also looks like a lot bigger than the other cities we have like seen before. Is that a? No, I've never seen Barney feathers in that color before. Mm hmm. Did you have like a uh, tropic color for him? Never knew existed. There may be a sea route now, but visitors to Tulisiola are still few and far between. And as we don't build seafaring ships, only a handful of Turali ever venture abroad. Mamulti are sellswords mostly. Those willing to play the fool sail with Lominsan merchants to secure employment in Eorzea. I suppose that makes us a rare sight in your country. Rare and currently undocumented. Were there some forms we should fill out, or...? Forms? Did you forget who you're traveling with? <laughs> <laughs> also, I don't think Tony will ever be as bureaucratic, I think. At least not as Charlie. And we are literally, like, you could say, we're running around with the princess. So, yeah. What is equivalent to the princess, you could say. You are outsiders? Visitors to Tural? We are. Our nation is soon to hold a right of succession to choose its next own servant. We will not abide interference from foreign agents seeking to foment trouble. What brings you to Tuli Yolal? Well, that right of succession. I can answer that. These fine people are allies in my succession bid. <laughs> that absurd promise. If you vouch for them, then all is well. Of course. Uh, please uh, accept our apologies. <laughs> <laughs> no need to bow and scrape. That our soldiers are so diligent in their duties fills me with pride. We'll be continuing our patrol then. Well, well. You really are a figure of authority here. Are you what else did you expect? I don't look the part. <laughs> I feel like she actually like, does look the part. She does not may act like it. Anyway, first things first. I bid you welcome to Tuli Sholal. I also like how the Eva ride looks. Very cool. Yeah, 
But despite the storm effort or to the contrary, here we are, safe and sound. Here for nice music to boot. I'm also actually gonna uh, check my chat real quick again. Okay. You have arrived in Tulioyal. You can return to the city at any time by speaking with the sprightly sailor in Scholar's Harbor in Old Chalian. Good to know. Hello, so. We arrived here, but. Before we actually go in and explore, I do need to take a short toilet break. So, sorry about it, but be right back. So, there we are, back again. Oh, let's look at our to I would say. Oh, and you're getting a weapon cover out of it. Is it higher than the item that I currently have? I'm not sure. Maybe we'll see. Right on. First things first. The coughing look the mat. Ah, uh, still a bit queasy here. <laughs> no more boards for a while. Hello. Thank you for the follow, Donov. Very appreciated. I realize we've just arrived, but we should get you familiar with the city before the ride of succession begins. Now I can see him. I should very much like to explore. Point. Yeah, all that once is not nice for us. Uh, the cutscenes I have to like waste myself. Then I will guide you. I assure you, in any condition to do so. Aha! We were pondering who those strange fellows were at the strange folk were. So the Fort Promise has found itself some new followers then. Followers. Look them out, are you in there? <clears throat> no, 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 not at all. Couldn't be better. The full promise does not get seasick. No, sir. No, oh, that sounds lovely. But a group of foreigners is going to attract attention, especially if they're in the company of the full promise. Everyone will be curious. We certainly were. Your siblings have a tendency to uh, command a respectful distance, but you, you're you just so easy to approach. And I enjoy it so much when you do. Please don't ever worry that you are a bother to me. You're a kind. Good day to you, for promise. They did have a point. Buglamad is technically lo royalty here. Like it or not, a person of his station surrounded by this many outsiders is bound to draw a crowd. Wait, what do you mean, technically? I suggest we move in two groups so as to attract less attention. Just uh, technically, ignore me then. Tamo, you and Kai can come with me. I'll take the twins then. We get in touch once we uh, once we've had a good look around. The voyage was hard on all of us, so take it slow and recuperate. You have time enough for that. Enjoy your wanderings. Oh, I would definitely enjoy them. Perhaps we should wait a bit, at least until Wuglemart and Nausea subsides. No need for that. Look, I'm ready to go. Uh, or maybe not. Should <laughs> at least like maybe just sit down for like five minutes or so. 
It's already have a lot. I'm fine now, really. Can't stand around all day with feeling sorry for myself, what with the cunt is and all. Now then, seeing as we are already here, I might as well tell you about the harbor. I already mentioned the reefs in our coastal waters, which explains why you don't see any big ships moor the docks. Only vessels, uh, vessels with shallow traps can navigate the bay, mostly small fishing boats or barges ferrying boats up and down the rivers from inland settlements. Much of the incoming traffic is from York to Raw, the southern land mass. The clans there produce various goods to export. The rest are unloaded here and carted off to the merchant stalls in the neighboring markets. Speaking of which, they said Vivi should be our next stop. Good morning, Cry, I'm now accompanying you, keep them at your side in order to proceed with the quest objective, blah blah blah. This is just like the normal companion stuff. We don't need tutorials for that. Just actually wanted to check. Uh, do we have a nice outfit for this? Mm -mm. Mm. I want to be a bit color, more colorful when going around, so. I feel like this would be a nice outfit for the change for this. And okay, it will definitely be better than the current weapon I have on me right now. When it comes to item level. This is the base 8B wheel, two yellow largest marketplace. Be right on the harbor, everything from fresh fish is two imported rares go directly to the shelves. Anything you want, they most likely have. Alright, I should mention that here in Tuliolil, we buy things with Pell, a currency that uh, Pelu Pelu created. Okay. But don't worry, more and more trades is coming from your so and most shops are accept uh, are happy to accept the girl. There's also Washumeki Wait, Washumeki Meki. Another market to the east of here, but it can wait for another time. I have other places I want to show you first. Next, we will head back a bit, then northwards up the stairs to a certain plaza. <laughs> I can't wait to see the look on your faces. Okay. So, here we will find Market Borg, Market Borg, Sounding Bell, yep. Handboard, of course, traders. Do you trade? Dawn Hunt? Okay, yeah, the Hunt trade, okay. Uh. Rolls, through a trainer worker, shops. Actually, let's see what the shops carry. Since we're already here, why not? Uh, independent merchant. You sell ah, crafting, crafting stuff. All right. Uh Buttercraft. Ah. Yeah, okay, gear. Uh we won't be going gear since we will get most of our stuff from the story anyway. And this is for crafters and such. Okay. Oh you you should just make do with whatever gear we found throughout the story, so yeah. What do you think of that, eh? Goodness me, you have evil rights in Tuliola? I think I told you before, but my brother Korana spent three years studying in Shalian. He fell in love with the nation in this ways and brought back to us the knowledge of evil right construction. Papa uh, warmed to the idea at once, had one built immediately. Did you do the attuning thing? If you're ready to continue, we are down again and then up the slope to the side. Right at the top is the gate which leads to Sek Sektura. Let's make a stop at a bright bloom post in the way, though that's the headquarters of the Landsguard. Okay. Yep, we definitely want to attune. We also should check out for the smaller Aetherites uh, around the area, actually. So, 
with that, we should be tuned. Yep. And I think I will set it at home point for the uh, um, remainder of like the Dawn Trace story, definitely. Since you probably have to come back here a lot of times. And I'm gonna pick up the Eva right here. Wants us to go there next, and let's go along the harbor to get, pick up the other UFO right? I'm not sure when we go to these three, but we think we do so eventually. I picked it up, and then we get close to these areas. Okay, now to go up there, it looks like. Okay. Fucking news. No. Of course, I can't. It's a city. We have a lot of narrow winding streets that corrupt the sides of the mountains. As you can see though, the builders made sure the city main's four fairs were wide enough to accommodate wagons. Huh. Yeah, it's definitely like has a lot of uh, verticality. Oh, this area looks nice. Like, quite pretty. Quite wiggle, lots of nice ruins. Like, at least they appear like ruins, but I'm guessing they're like clothing houses. Actually, like uh, facilities that are being used. That's a tune. Okay, what do we have here? Here we are, bread from Prost. The soldiers stationed here as principal for defending Tuliola and preserving the peace. The lands guard are led by our nation's strongest warriors, and so naturally Papa has commanded them since the beginning. At least until four years ago, when Sol Jal took over as a commander. The title is no empty honor. It means the first promise is considered equal to the Dawn Servant in martial strength. Meanwhile, I haven't even managed to... Well, I'll describe my brothers and their accomplishments later. Often an LSA should be around to here too. Come on, this time I showed you the sky gate. It's right at the northern end of the Teller March. It's where? Ah, right here actually. This big gate here over here. It just look kind of imposing and impressive.
Massive, isn't it? Definitely. And on the other side is an equally massive bridge to match. Both were constructed by a race of giants. The Yokhui. Ooh, the bridge is looking cool. Where's that actually leading to? Strictly speaking, Tural is actually two separate continents. Yok Tural, the southernlands of the mother, and Sak Tural, the northernlands of the father, which lie beyond the bridge. Legends say it used to be one grand landmass, but long, long ago the two gods for the titanic battle, and when one threw the other to the ground, the impact was so devastating as to split the continent in twain. A familiar sounding tale. I am put in mind of the conflict between Heidelin and Zodiac. Hmm. I probably could be that. But right, getting back to Sectorel, those lands are also part of the Tuliola nation, correct? That's right. As my father incredible, he united the people of two continents into a single nation. The many clans of Tural had been at war for generations. It was only when Papa traveled the lands and put a stop to their myriad conflicts that we finally had peace. And that's the main reason I want to win the throne, so I can preserve the peace he built. Sorry, getting him up. But I see you're more interested in what's behind the gate than hearing about my aspirations. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Crossing the bridge to Sectorel requires a special travel pass. Unfortunately, they won't issue any new parents until the right of succession is over. I promise to get you one when I'm done so good, but until then, you just have to wait. So are they saying this is like territory for like the next expansion or future updates? It could be like uh, probably updates from the story in like 8.1 to 8.5. Oh no, not, you're not on 8, we are on 7. Yeah, in version 7. 8 would be like the next expansion. Um, I will hold you to that. I've never broken my word. Once the throne is mine, the trailer permit is yours. Sweet. I must have covered half the city by now. Tulior is unlike any other places I've visited. I'm thoroughly enjoying myself. Ah, we actually get a weapon. Gimme. Oh, that's a book look. You actually like um, a travelist notebook, you could say. I kind of like it. Putting aesthetic for Tuliola, at least. We had a rest next towards the Ark of the Dawn. The dirigible landing is on the way. We have the dirigibles too. Tuliola certainly doesn't want for methods of travel. We get by. Now, if you've seen enough of this area, let me know and we'll continue on. Oh, sure, let's go. The Ark of the Dawn is on the other side of the city, so speak up if you see something uh, something that interests you as we walk. Okay. I feel like running from one end of the city to the other could take a bit off. The city actually really is quite big. I'm starting to conceive how one could construct an entire city on the side of a mountain. 
This was originally the site of the Yokoi Temple. The giants built it when they were first making the bridge to Sakturel to appease the god who slumbers in the Great Ocean Trench. After the Yokoi withdrew, the temple stood empty for centuries. So when Papa was establishing his new nation, he saw a structure he could refurbish into a palace, sitting practically in the center of Turel. He gathered artisans to do the work, and the houses they built for themselves became the foundation of the city you see today. Speaking of houses, we are passing through the resplendent corridor, the biggest residential district in Toriolo. Uh, we climbed these set of stairs here all the way up. Oh. Let's go up there. Papa's palace is called Wolok Chonsa, which roughly translates to Invisible Resilience. You probably want to take a closer look, but we'll be coming back here later, so let's move on for now. Alright. Is pretty, is pretty dangerous. Cute. <laughs> So this is a resplendent quarter. What manner of people live here? Oh, we have residents from all the Yogturel clans. Mama Junk, Supra, Pelu Pelu, Moblin, Hanu Hanu. We have also have Tonavavda, Hetzaro and Shetuna, who moved south from their ancestral lands in Saktura. In essence, it's a gathering of people from every corner of Turel. A true representation of Tully Aulas, the diverse character. The adornments on each building contribute to the eclectic cultural aesthetic. It's also beautiful. I'm glad you think so. Come, we continue down the stairs. Hmm, okay. Wait, I already tuned for this one. Ba -da -da -ba -ba -ba. Ooh, the night theme is nice. The big drum there is called the Dawn Herald. They play it for formal occasions, like when honoring the Lance Guard return from a dangerous duty. I tried hitting it with my eggs once and ripped the skin. Earned me a proper scolding. Let me tell you, I think that was the time Papa held me upside down by the ankle. <laughs> okay. Why not? Ooh. A Paka keep. Is this like the mount of choice for the region? Not really using like the auto travel uh, services usually, but we can unlock them anyway. Doesn't hurt. And here are our the the rituals. Not bad, eh? I hear the nations use airships to sail the skies, but we only find balloons in Toriola. They have them um, for the exact same reason as the Etherites. Korna brought them back by the uh, brought back the plans from Charlian and Papa for them fantastic and commissioned their construction. This was around three years ago. 
Since the time we've added flights to other settlements, trade with frontier communities has never been easier. But that's enough about the, uh, the rituals. The Ark of Thorns awaits. I do want to pick up the evil right over here. Do what are their like power? Like how do they work? Do they have like some kind of thrusting, yeah, like thruster or such? Because if they're just like um, cool-looking hot air balloons, then they will have like to rely on the winds for them to be carried the right way. Which I feel like wouldn't make. Um, like cargo transport that much easier to be honest. Actually, beeline for the uh, Evo right down there first, I think. Or, I don't know, let's just do this. We can go there afterwards. This is it the Ark of Dawn. Or of the Dawn. When the giants were still here, it was known as the Yoktura Land Gate. But when Papa found it to Leola, everyone began using its present name in the honor of its great achievement. For this gate is Kosamaruka, the wetlands south of the city. Depending on what the right of succession asks of us, we might end up going in that direction. Kosamaruka, the name alone is intriguing. Speaking of which, what were those fluffy animals we passed earlier? Ah, alpacas. Ah, those are alpacas. Few some four-legged fiends. I guess she didn't have that mm, good experiences with alpacas before. Few them? They seem quite pleasant to me. You'll learn soon enough, Cryer. You'll learn soon enough. <laughs> Maybe she's also getting sick from um, from riding more stuff than just boats. But forget the alpacas. I have something far more important to show you. Come along. Okay, now I'm gonna go for the Eva ride first. Oh, okay, there do seem to be a lot of people here, though, for whatever reason. And then there's only like one evil ride missing, as it looks like, and that's the one up there by the palace. But as Buru Glamad mentioned, we were gonna be going there anyway. If you learned, uh, wish to learn the history of Triolo, then look no further. Uh, the stone palace, you mean? Did I get it like an item card from this again? No, I don't know. What is special about these pillars, if I may ask? Well, the clans they may look like ordinary stone decorations, but if you take a really good look, you'll see there's something much more interesting. Okay. The following event cannot be skipped. You may wish to cancel any pending to defend any registrations. Yeah. Sure, let's inspect them.
gotta have like um, how do you call it I'm completely drawing a blank on the word right now <laughs> all right cliffs thank you cry <laughs> pictures wait no these are cliffs they seem to tell a, story, a series of stories, many of them featuring a two-headed mammal, Jean. Oh, then this must be... That's right. It follows the expert of my father, Kuro Jada, and his journey to unite our lands. We call it the Turial Saga. The deeds he performed and the bonds he forged, all immortalized in stone. There's no better way to learn how Tulio came to be. Study him as long as you like. Sure. Okay, uh, lay of repast. This one recounts the lay of the past. As you can probably tell, the figure depicted here is of the Gibral, like me. For decades, the Gibral and the Mamoja were at war for control of the forest of Yaktel. The actions Papa took to end the conflict have since been hailed as the first step in the founding of Toliola. There's a clan of Rothgar in Bolshra known as Hellions. In their society, the women ruled as queens, and the men served as devoted subjects. Yet here in Turel, Gibral men and women appear to be of equal status. How dramatically conscious can vary with location. Uh, let's see, this one is the Lay of Pots, which depicts the moblins of Kosamauka. They might wear odd masks and sound really muffled when they talk, but the gold and silver work they sell is the best you'll find anywhere. Moblin goods are the standard when it comes to gift giving. Clearly, the Banu aren't the only people with distant to our counterparts. Up there would be the goblins, I think. A layer of the Brotherhood. This pillar tells the lay of the Brotherhood. It depicts the scene where Papa granted an audience to the foreign explorer, Cat something. I can never remember the name. You mean Catan Ram? Ah, that's the one. Catan Ram's arrival into Roll is what prompted Papa to embark on his own journey. It said the two crew to be close friends, brothers in spirit, if not in blood. But no one knows what became of the Blur Explorer in later years. Catamaran's disappearance is a mystery in Erosa as well. The records say he traveled between our lands and yours after a while, for a while, but then it's assumed he was lost at sea. I feel like finding out what happened with Catamaran will be like part of the story. Like the amount like his name is being dropped and is already is just like suggesting that he will be a bit of importance to the story here as well and not just to like the past and world building we have the lay of reeds this is the story of when papa visited the hanu hanu in the village in kosamaoka ah the people of Vino almost mistook for vanu vanu if not for the colorful plumage he spent a fair bit of time among the Wano in the Sea of Clouds, so it's no surprise you took an interest in your countryman. I don't know what it is with your Wano, but our Hanu are a bait and Shifu, so they hold this one's festival every year. Very famous and a lot of fun. If you're done with the first half, we can move on to the second. Sure. Bam, bam. Lay of proof. Ah, the lay of proof. The big fellow is the Yoku, Yokui, the largest of Tural's people. These giants once used their great size and strength to step, establish a dominion and cosp en encompassing all of York Tural. In the southern reaches to a hill, they then turned northward, setting the sights on Sak Tural. You recall the massive bridge they built beyond the Sky Gate? 
Sometime after launching the northern campaign, however, they just gave up. They abandoned the lands that conquered and withdrew into the mountains of Yoko Pasha. I've never even seen any of their kind so much as set foot in the city. This was a people with the power and resourcefulness to raise a temple on a mountaintop and build a bridge across the sea with stone. What would move them to renounce their ambitions and their place in true early history? Good question indeed. It sounds kind of really weird. The blank pillar. Oh, this one is unmarked. Papa says he left the blank pillar for the next chapter of Tullio's history, whatever that may be. <laughs> I feel like this will be filled out at the end of the story. The Lake of Gold. Lay of Gold. This pillar shows one of the Palu Palu, whose homeland is in Okor Pasha. Having created our currency, the Palu are, right uh, are rightfully known as the Merchant Clan. They will see Toliolet's markets and their traveling peddlers are a common sight no matter where you go in Torel. Don't let their size fool you. They might be mistaken as children, but beneath those big masks, they are clever and calculating traders. Okay. Oh, this one is my favorite. The Lay of Eyes. It depicts the battle with the legendary tool Vitrel, Valigamanda. I should explain. A Tural Vitrel is a creature that has lived far beyond its uh, usual lifespan and awakened to pre. Uh, Preternatural power. Tataru described the Far Eastern Auspex in a similar fashion. Could this be the same phenomenon? Tataru is. Uh, Valigamanda itself was dubbed the Sky Room, a name earned for destruction and terror it visited upon Tural every time it stirred from its slumber. But 80 years or so ago, its ruinous reign was brought to an end. After a great struggle, Papa and his comrades managed to overcome the raging Weedral and sealed it away in the Uku Pasha Mountains. Despite its reputation, however, Valigamanda is also a symbol of power. That's why you see its likeness of Antuyola's emble uh, national emblem in adorning the banners at the palace. Hmm. Have you full of history, then? Yes, uh, thank you. Glad to hear it. You know, I feel awfully hungry all of a sudden. No surprises there, seeing I couldn't keep anything down for a while. But now I think I'm ready to eat again. So let's go and have ourselves a bite of a local delicacy. Come, I'll take you to the best restaurant in the city. I like the sound of that. Me too. Good food is always great. Why does it look so empty though? Have you ever had tacos? They are totally all a classic. You bake a crunchy shell made from corn flour and fill it with the meat and salad. Oh, I love tacos. Tacos are so fucking good. A lot of shops and stores sell them, but I like how they are made here at Chibalia Tea's best. I don't know, I could think like a completely butcher the pronunciation there. <laughs> and I need it to run right in front of me, right now. Let's head downstairs and place an order with all the Rook Ibu. Oh, okay, it's downstairs actually. Wee. Oh, wait. Why you take the stairs normally? And you can just jump them down. A 
Okay. With tables uh, uh, at the, right at the beach, I feel like this would be like such a great place to eat at. God. I already got a really cool atmosphere. Also, like, uh, tortillas with salsa and guacamole. Nice. My companions must sample your heavenly tacos. One for each of us, please. Only one? I would, like, immediately down, like, two or three. Right away, promise. And I'll pack them tight with my choicest feelings. Only the best for you and your friends. Did you hear the silver scares are back? Since our overseas foray ended in disaster, more than half their warband is missing, including their leader. Oh, we already heard about that. Aye, and now keen to rebuild their broken reputations, the survivors seek the Golden City, <laughs> a fool's errand. How many hopefuls have disappeared in search of that fable? They should count their lucky stars they came home alive at all. The legend of the Golden City is well known here, I take it. It is, but as no one's ever seen it, many question if there is any truth to the tale. Like our skeptical Erinville. Huh. Okay. I can't imagine the Dawn Servant would request a formal survey for a place that doesn't exist. Yeah, that definitely would be weird. I feel like I, I think you may know a bit about it, actually. Now to find a spot with a pleasant view to enjoy our crunchy spoils. First of all, why do you take out with tacos? The longer you wait eating them, this to like softer the shells get, which is not cool. And what do you mean? There were literally tables by a beach. <laughs> this was already great for you, already right there at the restaurant. Oh. You mean? If it isn't the third promise. Oh, no. I don't know these ones. <sighs> New salt. Dredge from foreign waters is my guess, brother. Oh, wait. These two headed things actually like. Okay. So consciousness is sharing with one body. Weird. Of course, that's it. Wuklamat is so afraid of the coming contest that she went crying for special help. <laughs> I mean, she wasn't crying for it, but yeah, she did get special help. Was there something you wanted, Bakul Jaja? <gasps> The third promise remembers us! Such an honor! Glory on your name, brother. <laughs> and on yours, brother. I know my rivals for the throne. Nothing more. Another child of the Dawn Servant? No, this brute. <laughs> we have no ties to their farce of a family. Unlike the sniveling house cut, we are blessed siblings. The Oliver Chaucer. 
We alone are fit to succeed Golul Jaja, a stone servant. Nah, All you don't look like that. Are equal in Your heritage gives you no greater claim to the throne. <laughs> Shall we test that idea here and now? See if your strength is equal to ours. Sure. I feel like it could beat you up. None of this has any bearing on the right of succession, correct? Best not waste your energies on pointless scuffles. <laughs> the kitten comes to the house cat's defense. Mm, pathetic. Since when was our nation overrun by mewling weaklings? <laughs> if he knew. Listen to me, you. Two-headed Mamoja. I knew of them, but that's the first I've seen in the flesh. Some get it into their twin heads that they're destined to follow in my father's footsteps. So they travel to distant lands to hone their battlecraft. Those are likely the ones you've heard about. Are there other two-headed claimants? No, just Bakul Jaja. Even in Tural, his kind are far from common. The Mamulja people largely belong to one of three clans. The Hubigo, the Bunewa, and the Dopro. Hmm. Every once in a great while, a two-headed offspring is born from a union between the brown-scaled Hubigo and the blue-scaled Bunewa. The child grows to possess immense strength, both physical and magical. Blessed siblings indeed. Forget them. Let's go and buy more tacos. I can think of nothing better to rid me of this bad taste in my mouth. I just said we should have just eaten it down at a restaurant, but I... Enjoying your tour of the city, I trust. We've seen our share of notable sights and took a moment to rest. As such, we're ready to present ourselves at the palace for the rite of succession. Shall we meet you there? The palace it is. I'll let Whoop Lamart know. Destiny calls. Perhaps we can return for more tacos later? <laughs> Poor Whoop. So it goes. We we'll get like well, <laughs> had like one little thing after another that's it's going against her. Poor work. Just hanging again with good maze for rolling. I was looking forward to trying some authentic Toriola cuisine, but the Shotarian join off and not in the others at the palace. Alright, there's a bit of a climb to the top, but you can head up from the resplendent corridor even the eastern side of Telamarch if you prefer. Now that you have an idea of how the city is laid out, I will let you find your own way to Wolo Shansa. Uh, am I poor, MC buddy? Poor, poor book. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's go from here. Mm 
And unless there's any more areas to this place, I think there should be the that's last like Ethernet shard we need to attune to. If you tune yourself to all the Ethernet shards, totally all the perf perfectly uh, perfect. Just as I like. Good, then we are all here. I'm still hungry enough to eat a whole roasted colibri, but the contest won't wait for us forever. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I like this. And it's not interfering much with what I'm already wearing, so I think I'm gonna just leave it like that. I do like this uh, uh this rope already. Uh, uh, uh. A post picture urn with several cutscenes will play in sequence. It is recommended just as it's a sufficient time to view these scenes in their entirety. I mean, we have time. So let's enjoy them. I've acquainted the twins with the city as best as I could in a short time. I'll just refill that more level for a moment. Because I've like just. Uh, um, Water infused with mint and citrus, and like if you can, you can just pour whenever I want to. The unbridled enthusiasm made it rather difficult. Invariably, something would catch their eyes, spurring them to run down an alley to investigate. It was like herding a pair of unruly curls. Can you imagine? <laughs> I understand all too well. Charlie had the same effect on me. By then, it was the time we saw the inside of the palace. However, we want to know I'm home and to meet the allies I've chosen. Give our impulse of years, though, there's no telling what we might be in for. Okay. At least it doesn't appear to be a fight. Otherwise, would have been notified about it. What's this Tinian doing here? <laughs> what the fuck is Tinian? Crossing 
This already looks fun. <laughs> that would do, Spearman. I will receive my darling daughter. Know that you are the strongest I fought in many a moon, if not longer. It is the privilege of a lifelong live to face such a formidable soul. <laughs> if it's formidable you want, then look no further than that woman there. Hello. I see you, warrior. <laughs> we had no idea you meant to visit Taral. I've seen what lies east. This time I chose west. And thus did our itinerant dragoon make his travel plans. You witnessed our bout. If you thought he was fearsome, that was with one head dozing. I'm not sure I understand. The old man has been feeling his ears. The uncovered side is the head of resolve, and age has only deepened his love for combat. The head of reason, wiser of the two, sleeps more and more these days. As I understand it, the veil helps with the restoration of his magical energies. Enough about me, Lamati. I want to hear of your adventures. Lamati? A term of endearment. It's what my family calls me. Hmm. I like the name Lamati though. Sounds nice. Oh. When last did we see you in the palace? In Green in Southern Ash. It's Erinville now, don't sorry. Right. I took the name while abroad. And have since grown accustomed to it. Hmm. Aaronville, then. And these others, I assume, are Lamati's recruited allies. Ha! All tempered steel. Yet as much as I enjoy testing their metal. The hour of the right is at hand. I will summon the other claimants at once. All right. Then I shall leave you to it. Good fortune, my friends. Asini is not going to take part in it. Sad. Though, kind of, yeah, on point for him. I always try to keep to his distance whenever we were up to something and then just keep him swooping whenever we needed him. <laughs> yeah, like the perfect timing. He loves his hero entrance, so to say. Oh, Mikoto over there, okay. The Claymans are assembled. The first promise, Zorolja. The second promise, Krona. Ah, her brother who went to Shalian as a scholar. The third promise, Uglamat. Hmm. 
And lastly, the chosen of Mamuk, Bakun Jaja. You four will compete in the right of succession, the outcome of which will decide who takes my place as Dawn Serpent. I am not the man I once was. My wiser half sleeps the days away. And it is time I yield my position. But mine is a torch that has never been passed. Tuliyolo is young. And so I look to the always for inspiration. The right of succession, the means by which the Autarch of Mamuk was chosen. Only the two headed were deemed fit for this contest, but the Tuliolol I built is a nation of many peoples. Our leader needn't have two heads, nor be a Mamucha at all. <sighs> So I gave the right of claimant, not only to the son I sired, but to my adopted children as well. Yet the opportunity to rule was still not equal. That is why a recent tournament offered a place in the contest as the winning prize. to compete against. Ah, oh, though it seems the one head was already too afraid to face us in the tournament. <laughs> Our brother was in shock to Rol leading the Lands Guard on a campaign to eradicate a Tural Vidrar. Sense, we know he was too busy for games. Now, for the part you've been waiting to hear the nature of the contest itself. To triumph in the right of succession and thereby claim our nation's throne. You must travel the lands of Yoktural and find the city of gold. If I may, father. Speak, Kona. Also, the Quarna is also a machinist, this looks like. At least when you look at his weapon. The Golden City is an ancient Turali legend, but after so many failed attempts to find it, the story has become more fairy tale than fact. If you would charge us with such a quest, are we then to assume you have proof of the city's existence? Are you for us proof, my unbroken word? For I have seen it with my own four eyes. The city's real. All those years. This was before the founding of Tuliolo. I traveled the lands of Turol with my companions. And we ended our journey at the gates to the Golden City. I mean to have you do the same, but in order to achieve victory proper, you need to break the seal I put in place. Bring them. Hmm.
What's it giving us? Ah, oh, the close. You will retrace the path I've walked to unite our peoples step by step. Along the way, seven chosen electors will be waiting to measure your worth. Hmm. Earn their keystones by performing the feats they ask of you. Once you've fitted each of the seven tablets with the keystone, you'll have the key to unlock the seal on the Golden City's gates. And do we all share these lays or do each of us get a set of these? So the contest is in stages, none of which can be skipped by rushing to the ultimate objective. Exactly. Exciting, isn't it? Martial tournaments, hunting festivals, and now this? You do so love your contests, Papa. <laughs> Were I a few years younger, I would have joined in myself, giving you a proper challenge. You may think the ride is tedious or nonsensical, or both, but I am yielding our nation's throne. Let me have this final indulgence. A waste of time. Just name Bakunja as successor and be done with it. Light of cessation begins now. I'll be watching your progress with great interest. And Clement, remember to collect your tablets before you leave. Okay, the dogs are all of them get like a set of them. of Lamachi's allies. Let's speak freely. I am Cryo Baldessian, representative of the students of Baldessian. My name is perhaps familiar to you? Ah. It would seem you sent this letter to my order some years ago. The ink has since faded and much of the writing is illegible. Even so, we managed to determine the essence of it. A request to investigate the Golden City. Addressed to my grandfather, Galuf. Included with the correspondence, was this earring. A fairy tale and a piece of jewelry were enough to convince my grandfather to sail halfway across the world. So there is surely some greater mystery at work here. On behalf of the students, I've come to seek clarification on the matter. Have you any knowledge you might share with me? <laughs> no, not at this time. Wow, how mean. Immediately rejected. The claimants with finding the Golden City. To fulfill your request, would afford one of them an unfair advantage in the rights of succession. But once the contest is decided, I plan to entrust the entire truth to my successor. If you want to hear it, 
Then you have best helped Lamachi win. Very well, Dawn Servant. On my honor as a student of Valdesian, I will find your golden city. Thank you for hearing my petition. I mean, in terms of the contents, okay, fair. It's still a bit mean, though. <laughs> How about that? She's grown into a remarkable young woman. You should be proud, Galov. Hmm. I guess Galuf was one of his companions in the past. I wouldn't be surprised. Or I wouldn't be surprised if he actually took the name of uh, the Kerman or whatever it was again uh, in this area. Too late to change your mind now, I suppose. But are you sure you wish to be part of this? The same like Aaron will like took on a different name for Eorzea. Our third promise is not one to take no for an answer. Though you may have agreed to help, I worry that you were swept up in her relentless enthusiasm. Or perhaps you've been lured by the glory of the Golden City. Either way, this contest for the throne will place you and yours at the heart of political turmoil. If you are second-guessing your decision, tell me now. This may be my last chance to help you withdraw. When have we not been part of any kind of political turmoil whenever you've been like involved in something there was always some political stuff going on in the background life is a series of journeys my friend and there's no telling what awaits us on the long road but what's important is to be true to yourself as you walk it. Only then can we hope to be content when we arrive at the end of one and step forward into another. I have my own decision. We gonna go get for this adventure, no matter what happens. Is that so? I will speak no more of it then. As for my own involvement, I can no longer conduct myself as a mere guide, I think. Not after the Dawn Servant's revelation. You get like an introduction to all of them now. First promise, our village needs aid. The cold weather stunts our crops, and the children of our village go hungry. Once you ascend the throne, I beg of you, grant my people new lands, please. Sereja. Take heart, tiller of the soil. The resilient son, blood heir to the dawn servant, has heard your pleas. Okay. Soralcha, the first promise and commander of the landscape. Soralcha, the palace here. As he was so careful to remind the crowd, Soralja is indeed the natural child of Guru Jata. And resilient son, is that another title, like the first promise? After a fashion, common knowledge has it that two-headed Mamuja cannot sire children. Yet Soralja was born all the same, 
with the head of resolved features and the head of recent scales. An extraordinary example of life's unyielding resilience. Hmm. This is kind of an anomaly. And a warrior's reticence. He says little, but the way he moves. I know a hardened soldier when I see one. He's a natural swordsman. A gift he inherited from his father. Some even say that the son has already surpassed the sire. Should he come to power, the first promise means to employ that martial prowess in the conquest of foreign lands. For this, he and his supporters have been labeled expansionists. Okay. This puts him in direct opposition to Wuklamat, who advocates for the preservation of peace. You may recall that she spoke of a claimant who cannot be allowed to rule. That is Oraltia, the warmonger. Okay, I would have expected that to be the two-headed one because, at least from the from the personality we've seen so far of the two-headed contestant, I feel like he's also one who cannot be allowed to rule. Prion, are you all right? Also, the issue is if we let uh, rule the get the throne and he is trying to go to war and be an expansionist it would only mean trouble for your sale later on and it would put us as enemies further down the line anyway so it's a good way you could prevent this yeah. first time it gave me a glimpse into the Raja's ambitions deep and unknowable like an abyss yet at the same time a roaring unquenchable fire it was a trifle terrifying, to be frank. Second promise, you must bring us more marvelous conveniences. <laughs> and trains and the like. We need you in charge to make trading easier. The elders, they complain and complain about abandoning tradition. But we're not like them, afraid of everything foreign and new. You have our wholehearted support. With your ingenuity and knowledge, you're sure to win the contest. Forgive me, but the rite of succession is barely begun. I will hear your petitions if and when I am named Dom Servant. If you will excuse me. Okay. Plain spoken, as always. <laughs> oh, that's our corner. Practical to a fault. I don't see an issue with him so far, though. Here we have Kona, the second promise. Who spent time as a pupil at Charlian's own studio. Now that you mention it, I think I did see him in the halls once or twice. There was nothing to suggest he was too early, much less from a royal family. That was by design. He forwent his usual garb and took an Eorsian name to avoid attention. So it was Kona who introduced the dirigibles. And the railway, too, given what we just heard. In furtherance of his goal, to enrich Tuliolal with every bright notion he learned of in Sharia. He is the hope of those who prize innovation. As aloof as he may seem, Kona and Wuklamat actually get along rather well. They bicker and banter, as only close siblings do. I feel like when Wook would like become Donzo and O'Connor would be doing so the two would kind of do it together. How gracious of you all to cheer the lesser claimants. At least when you uh, at least I think Wook Lamal would actually like employ her brother to I feel like you could say like the second head. Uh, because like the Donzone has like his 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 combat focus set and has like reason focus set. 
I really like those two would like make a quite good combo in that regard as well. should reign is Mamul tradition and has been so since before there was a Tuliola. I'll brush aside your feeble contenders and then you'll see who deserves to fear me. <laughs> well said, brother. Mamulja, I finally found peace in Tuliolal. Ah, a pity those fanatics are intent on keeping that tradition alive. The chosen of Mamuk, Bakul Jaja, winner of the recent martial tournament, and the only claimant not of the Dawn's promise. His strength is undeniable, but you see how he is. A few devoted Mamulja are his only supporters. It was kind of like what part of an extremist group. Should he win it? His policies and so forth. I doubt he's thought much beyond winning the contest itself. But one thing seems certain. If he does become Dawn Servant, he will see the Mamulja exalted as the ruling class. And all others forced into subservience. Sounds like another that cannot be allowed to rule. Mm hmm. for one thing and one thing only third promise to abide together in harmony with our neighbors whom we love in this land we share it is our way the Turoli way Galul Jaja built for us this peaceful nation and we beg you to preserve it you have my word I won't let your pleas go unanswered Until Tuliolal was founded some 80 years ago, this continent was ravaged by war. The eldest among us remember that dark era, and they are Wuklamat's most ardent supporters. Apologies, it's hard to get away. This is Namika, my childhood nursemaid. She's been like a mother to me my whole life. I told her it wasn't necessary, but she insisted on seeing us off. Aww. Sweet. I place our precious third promise into your care. Did you know Wuklamat was taking part in the rite of succession? Of the Dawn's promise? I thought it was only Zoralja and Kona. If she has any accomplishments to her name, I've yet to hear them. Compared to the two Mamulja, she pales in martial prowess. And then there's Kona, who's far and away the most educated of the bunch. I hate to say it, but it's hardly a competition. So she is the underdog. I, more than anyone, I understand how much better my brothers are than me. Better? Wook Lamat. I have never thought of you as the lesser sibling. Your brothers may excel in their respective ways, but you boast qualities that both lack. A strength that is yours alone. Having cared for you for so long, I should know. 
I feel like her strength is just like co compassion and empathy. Which like the two others do not share that much. Thank you, Namika. Well, we ought to be on our way. Yes, hurry along. I await word of your victory with bated breath. We could like by the concept of like body, mind, and soul. You could say that um, soldier is the body, Koran is the mind, and Wook would be the soul. In that kind of respect. But well, right off the session started, but we gonna take a short, <laughs> another short break, another tired break for me. So be right back in like a minute or so. So, there yeah, I'm back. <sighs> also got like a bit of like a refill for my train, so. And a lot more eyes, because it's all one. Well, so much for the preview, I mean, I had in mind. Probably was not one to waste time and he decides to act. I'm used to it by now, of course, but others are often caught of guard. In any case, we should talk about it, how we're going to find the City of Gold. All we have to work with are the seven tablets and their connection to the Toriola Saga. Might I suggest first comparing the tablets against the palace? We should check for any discrepancies between them. Good idea, let's go and take a look. Indeed, a small suggestion of Alphino there. <laughs> God. Makes everyone who can match the tablets, if you would. Of course. Everyone has a tablet, and let's compare them to the respective pillars. Keep an eye for even the smallest difference. I would say that there is stuff already placed here, which is not with the tablets. Here. They have nothing placed in the sockets down there yet. Unless I'm missing something, the cliffs appear to be identical. The only difference being that the tablets have hollows where the keystones are to be fitted. So now that we established uh, the scenes are the same, uh, seams are the same, then do we go from here? Hmm. And Don Zone said we were to retrace the path he walked in uniting to us people, and did we would encounter seven electors along the way. Then we have the answers here in front of us. Papa's path is all laid out in the Tutorial Saga. The, level, uh, the Winston Cliffs portray. Do we know the exact locations where they took place? If one is close, we could go there and search for an elector. That would confirm we are on the right track. Hmm, 
Only let me think. The lay of reeds was in the nearby Hanu Hanu settlement. Papa took me there once. It was during festival season, and the whole village was alive with good cheer. There's also the lay of gold, the one involved uh, with the Perpetual village, which is about the same distance from here. Before going anywhere, we should ask around about the road ahead. We heard a lot of talk as we toured the city about the storm we passed through at sea. Apparently, it ravaged Shokturel several days ago. Since our roads are not as well paved as the horses, they are more susceptible to damage from natural disasters. If you want to avoid wasting time taking that and trail, I suggest we spend a few moments making inquiries. If it's information we need, just leave it to me. I'll bring the information to us. Every really to ensure we are prepared for the journey. I'll guide you to the accommodations I've arranged. Wait, did we get like to sleep in one of the huts up by the beach? That's cool. And that's really cool. Welcome to the Farahat cabins. That's right, the restoration is under Buklamat's name. If you don't mind, I'll leave my companions to you. Certainly, sir. I will go track down the fur, I promise. Once you've finished organizing your gear, you can meet us outside Shibalia Thai. Greetings, visitor to Tulial, and welcome to the Forward Caverns. Whenever you're ready, I'll show you to your rooms. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're not actually like actually visiting the rooms though. Okay. Do have to go upstairs? Uh, why not downstairs? Just to be the keenest to hear out, Tamamo. Or to head out, not to hear out. But where are we in I wonder? Oh god, you are here. Who might your companions be? Seeing as we need information, I thought we better get it from. Uh, we better to get it from than the locals. Those way from the villagers were thinking to visit. I give you credit for taking the initiative at least. What do you mean at least? I'm honored that the third promise was like my advice. I too am happy to answer your questions. Any encounter might be an opportunity to do business. Thank you both for your help. Yeah, before we begin, there will doubtless be other occasions when we need to act independently. So I brought uh, these for the two of you. I 
Ah, well, probably Link Pearls, right? What's this? It's called a Link Pearl. A gemstone harvested from a special shell. When linked together, they allow people to community communicate across great distances. Is that so? What a handy thing to have. It'll be very useful on our travels. Speaking of which, I should get back to introducing my two new friends here. Can we do that while we're eating some tacos? What is that shirt? Okay, first time I'm seeing the shirt and it looks weird. It's, it looks interesting. The Tulio Saga features a number of Tural clans. Two of those, the Hanohano and Pelo Pelo, have settlements relatively close to the city, so I brought a representative of each. As I mentioned before, the Hano are chief of people who love their festivals. They make their appearances in the Lay of Reeds, and their home village, Okano, is located in Kosam Kosamaoka. The other smaller fellows is one of the Pelu, the kind of business minded folk from Okopasha. They appear in the lay of gold and craft all kinds of marvelous goods in Russian Pelu, their village. Now, as for deciding which village to visit first, why don't you put that infringious instinct of yours to work for us, Tamo? Pick our destination. Ah, upon completing this quest, the maids in our branch into two quest paths. Accept the path from the for one hour will turn will prevent you from accepting the quest of the approachable Palo and vice versa. The second quest path will become available from the respective NPCs once you've completed the series of quests from the first path. Furthermore, story elements and quest rewards will not be affected by your initial choice of path. Speak with the NPC you prefer and embark on the trail for the right of the succession. Sehr schön. Dann. Oh. I already see. There is Blue Marked Side Quest. And I do wanna do Blue Marked Side Quest as soon as they are available. And on in your hand. This is the Hansek quest, if I'm guessing. Uh, which can immediately finish. Good. When it comes to like the blue side quests, there are already side quests that are like for. Um, For spe like specific like game mechanics to unlock them, like be it the handboard and other stuff. So I do wanna do these as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. There's another one up there, so we're gonna go for that. And I'm guessing these two for why the hunt leaves of Tuliola. Can do not do these yet. Take some to as oh yeah. Except for the blue quest which we cry like land in hand, I am I ignore these for now. I'm not big on crafters or like gatherers, so I'll do these whenever I'm done with the story. Where's the quest here? Oh, it's for the... Uh, 
da ba 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 ba. Ah, just for the sightseeing log, okay. I've never really done much of the sightseeing log to begin with, so... Yeah, we will ignore that as well. Okay. Come on. That one already meet already here then if we see them we take them but only if we see them it's like if we happen to pass by them um okay which girl we're gonna go for Palo or Hanu I wanna go for the pedal, uh, pedal first. The quest to Kosama Uka will become available once you've completed the quest series beginning with the approachable pedal. Yep. What is it that you would like to know? Our main concern was confirming the state of the road ahead. As we call to reach Oko Pasha, we depart from the Arch of the Dawn. Then take the road west at the first fork. Should we be wary of anything along the way? There's indeed a way to Okopasha. After damage wrought by the recent downpour, however, you'll be doing more uh, stumbling than walking. But do take heart. When it comes to rocket terrain, we have a most dependable solution available. Come with me. We'll be back to talk to you in a good time, friend Chano. Meanwhile, you can eat and drink your fill at uh, Jabalia Tire. It's all been arranged. Okay, so we're just leaving him here and... Peace off. Okay. And here we are with the Alpargas. To the demise of Fuglamada, I'm betting. May I choose you to your most dependable companion, the Alpaca. <laughs> These animals can traverse all patches deep mountain trails as if they were gen gentle fields. And all by carrying heavy loads. Our merchants would be lost without them. So they will fill much the same niche as our chocobos back at home. I'm wondering like when there will be like just normal horses for once. <laughs> because I don't think we've actually seen any like normal horse. It's just always been like other um Animals, which are like used for work and like transport. You don't have a Pagasan horse here. A Pagasan are native to Yoktura. It also has a chocobos. And Eastern lands have their horse. Oh, we had horses in Eastern lands. Okay. Why go to the trouble of breeding another pack beast in a place which ill suits its qualities and where it's not needed anyway? Hmm, but must we ride these little monsters? I'm getting a vision you are on front of a packers. 
and Osmo and being a bit naughty, I ran around putting on their wool. One of them spat on me, and it was the foulest stench you can imagine. <laughs> okay, I like the story. <laughs> what I'd like to write. A bug has spread uh, some mounts are uh, inquisitive and docile. Even those without experience find them easy to handle. What are you doing just then? So, what's my information useful to you? Uh, yes, very helpful. Even if it wasn't what I wanted to hear. Good. I'll take my payment now. You want me to pay you? What else did you expect? Those are the pedal. I guess I should, uh, should expect as much from a pedal merchant. Let me see what I have on me. The pedal pedal value the act of spreading joy for droid. As you should know, they take pride in making deals that benefit both parties. Here I go, a fair price for your fair advice. Yes, I made a trade with the third promise herself. Well, my friends will never believe this. Shall be on my way now. I wish you safe travels. I'll be golden and thank you. I better not get spit on again. You brought it on yourself. You might come and gentle, and so will they. I'm so not happy about this, but if we need to write a package to reach Oka Pasha, then that's what we will do. Alright. To rally poets of your sang of a mountain that would stand tall, even should all other lands sink beneath the sea. Indomitable and eternal, it arises from Urko Pacha, the hundred peaks of time. Of all the beasts which crawl and fly, only the legendary Valikarmanda could hope to disturb the summit's serene majesty. Yet, with that flying calamity imprisoned by the Dawn Serpent, what great feat remains for those who would claim the throne? And seeding and fighting it. So this is Urkopacha. I've never actually been here before. is so crisp and clear mountains everywhere you look that one massive peak in particular has quite the presence it puts me in mind of some ah oh. that is Warkor Sormor the tallest mountain in Yorktural its sheer height makes it an imposing climb but there are other reasons the ambitious keep their distance Oh, do tell. <sighs> Where to begin? Excuse me, but you're Wook Lamat, are you not? I, I hadn't thought to encounter one of the Dawn's promise here of all places. <laughs> ah, but, but I should introduce myself. I am Bol No, a weaver by trade. Hmm. Well met, Bol no. We're on our way to Watrun Pelo. Oh, truly, <laughs> I've just come from there, as it happens. I'd ask the Pelu Pelu who sell me their wool to give me a tour of their alpaca ranch. The head rancher and I shared a bottle of mezcal while he explained the finer points of wool production. Mezcal? Is that a local beverage? It's an Urko Pacha specialty. A spirit made from distilled agave heart juice. Hmm. 
Yes, and it must have done wonders for my mood, for I tripled my usual order of alpaca wool. Uh, they did offer me a discount, though, so it wasn't a bad deal in the end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he fell for the usual trap. Ah, but listen to me, boring you with my tedious stories. I, I will leave you before you are lulled to sleep. Uh, goodbye, and safe travels. As they do say, alcohol loosens tongue and purses. Or like purse strings, to be more precise. Oh, silly me. I almost forgot to say the thing I actually wanted to say. Peace for Tural. I agree with your vision, Third Promise. You have my support in your bid for the throne. I gather from his tale we would be foolish to underestimate Pelu Pelu merchants. Mm-hmm. Yes. They do more than run the markets in Tuliola. Pelu Pelu peddlers can be found everywhere in Tural. Traveling from place to place on their sturdy alpacas. I already fear uh, whoa, whoa, how much skill they will squeeze out of Stinian. Because Stinian is quite naive when it comes to trading. They are effusive and engaging speakers. And many is the customer who's been talked into spending more than they bargained for. And they're also quite too eager to spend his money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they won't find this customer so easily charmed. Watson Pelos down the path! Off the main road! Don't get lost! It's right there. <laughs> yeah, okay. How are you supposed to like miss that? It literally is right there. Also, I feel like what I should do is... Right, E for compass. I do should like keep this here. This is Squash and Palo, home of the Palo Palo. Rookula March would have arrived before us. That's not good. You've come out this way for the right of succession? Oh, this means I'm exchanging words with the future dawn servants. We will believe the outcome is far from decided, but it is a possibility. How fortunate then that are the in cloaks woven from especially luxurious alpaca wool. Such a garment would look magnificent when draped over the shoulders of your budding ruler. And an Asian's ruler should dress the best for adoring people, yes. Finally, for our finest lady, that's right. Comfort promise, my rose dog shelves are but a few steps away. Finest lady? <laughs> I like the sound of that. Alright, I suppose a quick look wouldn't hurt. Ahem, what did we just talk about? I don't know, when did you... Ah, Shatona from far off Sakturel. Northern Winters are bitterly cold affairs, I'm told. I cannot imagine how he survived them without a lovely warm coat of quality alpaca wool. No, thank you. I'm not in need of a new clothes at the moment, and neither is the full promise. Perhaps another time. Of course, of course. My well, shop door is always open. Mm. 
You were saying something about not being easily charmed? I was just... <sighs> As I mentioned previously, the Pado people live for, live for bringing happiness for trade. They won't cheat you or sell you defective goods. They will, however, disarm you with the deft turns of phrase and unwitting customers like Wukramat for prey to this ephemeral approach time and time again. Your only recourse is a clear and firm refusal. The room pieces don't matter, should you make your disinterest plain. Everybody be inside in the minds of the Pedo Pedo. Let us all take Ermit's words of caution to heart. Well, at least they are like, as respectable merchants in that way. Even though they do try to coax customers into buying stuff. Or like potential customers. <laughs> Not a famous moment, I admit, but now that we're here, let's do what we came to do, and the elector. Allow me to propose a strategy then. Cry, I will and I will speak with the merchants. Who could not you and Aaron were my try approaching the terrorless passageways. Tamo, break investigate any of the other establishments which catch your eye. Should we not know what of use, let us relay it to the third promise. All right, don't no, let's do that. But first, let's unlock the ether right here. And I guess the Alpaca uh, uh, auto travel route. Ah, and gemstones, of course, for freights. Uh. Well, actually, my gemstones that I still have also work here. Interesting. But I do need to uh, go up a few f fate levels here first. Oh, there was one of here, so let's talk to you. Electors? Oh, yes, I've heard all about the right of succession. Learning to put a new ruler on the throne, eh? Personally, I'm rooting for Soeldra. If the first promise wins, you will look to expand our sphere of influence. That means access to more resources and more customers in the thousands column, potentially. So many new trading opportunities to spread happiness far and wide. Others have been coming around to my way of thinking, so I've begun crafting goods inspired by the resilient sun. Would you care to purchase something? Uh, no, no, I would not. Very well. You said you wanted to know about the Elector. I could help you, but I won't. I can't uh, can't tell you are not a supporter of Soldra or his policies. Well, because I feel like Rook would give you more trading opportunities since she's already established, uh, you could say, um, good relationships with her also. Yeah? Or at least she can like use our own name in influence to establish good relationships. Hello there, I'm Ablu. Did you have a question for me? Sorry, I don't know about any electors. Should take a moment to see our price of packers before I leave though. Oh, but be sure to admire them from a respectable distance. Get a close and our nearest darlings may be tempted to spit on you. And that stuff stinks. It happened to a visiting buyer not so long ago. Topley, that's a ranger. He was so mad at me for not giving a proper warning. No one makes a mistake without Topley noticing. He knows everything that happens on this ranch. Ah. So maybe this Topley guy may be our elector. It already sounds like he, like with someone who like has his ear out about the whole like area or like town or city, however you want to call it. Why does it be the one who would be suitable as an elector? I 
don't someone select her. I thought you were a new face in town, you for the right of succession. I take it? Me? I don't much care who sits uh, to the throne so long as they keep Toro peaceful. The people tend not to be in the mood to relax and sip Rex and Mescal once arrow and spears start flying, if you know what I mean. Well, then you definitely should be ruling for a group then. Because there are at least two where this is quite a high likely possibility. Speaking of which, would you like a cap? A joy shared is a joy doubled, I say. Ah, yes. All oh, right, yes. You were asking about the lecture business. Being but freshly returned from the might riding around, I've heard that there's a contest of food, but not much else. Our head ledger Topley could probably tell you more about it. Again, Topley being name dropped. Mm -mm. Okay, it's not as easy to reach a river so far. Okay, I would have to get a leg around the other way. I can't get up there, okay. Yeah, okay. You won't bother. We'll have uh, uh, to watch yourself around these silver uh, tongue peddlers. I almost bought a bottle of mescal and a stack of blankets, and then there was this enchanting ornament. Anyway, I did manage to learn that Topley is the man to talk about the contest. Now, if you only did share this head ledger of theirs, is to be found. Hmm. Really? He's also the head ranger? Well, the alpaca ranch is not far from here. I say we pay the visit before the others return. <laughs> Alright, where is he though? Apparently is here somewhere. At least we hope. This is a lot of a packers. Still, we know the head actually could be here somewhere. Yeah? I can let fear deter me. Not to say that I'm scared, of course. <laughs> Excuse me, is one of these workers Tobley? Tobley? Oh yes, he likes to mingle with the ranch and to keep an eye on things. I can't tell you which one he is, though. We can't? This is part of the contest. All I can say is that Toby often mentions his favorite pension subject. He also can't resist a uh, profitable trade. Though who among us could... Though who among us could... Am I right? So if bring him a very good deal, he might let his identity slip. Heh, <laughs> so it's like a game. Easy enough. All I have to do is over Toby a deal he can't ignore. No problem at all. Well, maybe one problem. I don't think my purse is deep enough to pay everyone we think might be Tobley. Let's ask some questions first to narrow down the field. Great. We can meet back here uh, to share our impressions. Uh, do we have to like play Among Us now? Well, I'm obviously not Tobley. I'm. Oops. I should have said that. You meant to find out yourself who Toby is, or if an elector is even in the village at all. Good luck. A uh, resident from across the sword, if I'm not mistaken. Be warned, the alpacas will spit if you stole them. I suggest to keep you moving slow and deliberate. You think I might be Toby? Haha, <laughs> well, maybe I am. 
All I will say is that this village, in this village, no one have read more alpacas than I. Am I totally? Yes, yes, that's me. Excellent work from the third promise in the entourage. Sharp ink sticks. Shall we commence in the rate of succession then? Um, my guess is it's this dude. The diligent one. I see you're both done with our interrogations, so who do you think it is? Safe messages, but let's see your pick. The diligent. Ah, the work are so intent on stay patrols. Add my own at one too. Time to rip the mask of your mystery ranch and so to speak. We know it's you, Topley, and to prove it, I propose a deal, a generous sum of coin for confirmation of your true identity. An offer I gladly accept. As you have correctly guessed, I'm indeed Topley, head ledger of Vashampalo, and head ranger of the family ranch. I'm also one of good old judges chosen electors. I had a place featured in the Tulio saga just as before. I was right to trust in your instincts, and I wager this won't be the last time. She found your old fair and square, Topley. And I'm glad she did. Would have been a pity had her bit ended here. Deducing the Don Servant's elector was the first step of defeat. Too simple a task for this aspiring ruler, eh? Right. Not hard at all. <laughs> <laughs> the Roger. I am told the head ledger, Tobli, is to be found here. You have to guess which one of us is Tobli. That's part of the test. <laughs> well, we can also do it like this, I guess. Without even asking a single question. Very impressive indeed. Without amusing prologue out of the way, we can proceed to the actual challenge. Per the Don Servant's instructions, I was free to devise any manner of feat. I considered the number of possibilities in the tenth column. But I think I have a good one. You must go forth and capture for me an alpaca. Of course. Of course it would have something to do with alpacas. While I've not had the best experiences with alpacas, aren't they generally docile creatures? That doesn't sound like much of a challenge. <laughs> Bring out the example! I feel like Wookus Gate being spit on again. This is a special kind of alpaca. Would you please approach the animal, Third Promise? Who? 
Me? Well, it should stay calm if I stay calm, right? That's what Erinville said. Knew it. Ah, little monster spat on me. Ah, oh, that stinks. I can't. <laughs> right in the face of all things. Paradoxical creatures, being both extremely curious and extremely cowardly. Press your luck when they're frightened, and you'll get a face full of spit, as you've all just witnessed. Has an awful stench, their expectoration. The globs contain half-digested food, you see, making it an effective deterrent against perceived threats. Wild valley blades like this one are especially timid, and can therefore be quick to lash out. <laughs> they're also especially hardy. Indeed. We take the rugged wild alpacas and breed them with our gentle domesticated stock. This produces the strong but beatable pack animals prized by our traveling merchants. That's all well and good, but did I need to bathe an alpaca spit for you to make your point? So, the task is to catch a wild alpaca. That is correct, but we warned that it is a feat easier said than done. I suggest you prepare well before you enter the valley where the creatures dwell. And by you, I mean the claimants only. Allies are not permitted to assist with the catching. Oh, okay. The alpacas will help me judge which of you is worthy of receiving a keystone. So I'm to chase down a fluffy, spitting demon, and that somehow proves I'm fit to rule? Well, I feel like Google Man has an advantage here because some old show. The way he. Um, like made figured out which one is Toby is by intimidating one of them <laughs> and if his whole shtick is like purely like maxing out his intimidation skill if we would just like speak in D D terms uh, D D terms then well good luck if you're intimidating, like the especially timid alpacas, he will get spit for days. <laughs> As I said, the dawn servant granted me the freedom to decide my challenge. And when you reach the end of the rite, I dare say you will understand why I chose what I chose. Very well. This won't take long. Wait! Didn't I warn you this was easier said than done? There are preparations to be made, factors to consider. A beast is a beast. All yield to strength. So far, this experience has done absolutely nothing to improve my opinion of alpacas. And I love Samuel Ja, to be honest. But that doesn't mean I can't do this. Revolting spit aside, they're just another animal. Well, hello. Are you all right, Oklamart? We thought we heard you scream. The third promise does not scream. 
It was more of a subtle joke. <laughs> sure. Uh, scream, in other words. <laughs> Uh, I already like Wook the Mouth. <clears throat> Did you find the Elector? Oh, we certainly did. I had to go and wash the desk stuff with my face. I think I got it all of it. What do you mind taking a snit of me? Just to make sure this dungeon has ruined my sense of smell. Hey, I saw that look. <laughs> okay. As Wuglemart helped demonstrate, the Valaya Packers are real with people. Getting close enough to catch one will not be an easy task. You might have warned me about it earlier. If enough trouble will tame my Packers, how do you expect me to rank a wild one? With the proper saddle, we infuse the level with a relaxing scent that soothes the spitting beast. Wonderful, give me one of those then. Have you perhaps forgotten we are a clan of merchants? If you want a taming settler, then we will need to find a settler and make them an offer. Um, a settler and make them an offer. They don't come cheap, of course. Crafting a settler will cost you the equivalent of 10 pal in the thousands column. You mean 10,000 pal? I don't have that kind of coin. Converting into a guild comes to around a million or so, perhaps if you are a pigeon. Don't tell me they made the thing where they like used the conversion rate of like either euros or US dollars to yen. <laughs> and guild being the in universe equivalent to yen and pal to like dollars or euros <laughs> because the conversion rate about is like 140 or something around like that so if you like go with saying okay it's like around like 100 times of that in in, in girl i mean it wouldn't like be a perfect match, but the dimensions would be similar. <laughs> no, no, this is my feat to accomplish. I would feel right about having a less pay the cost. I find the money. Somehow. In that case. The basket of wool is worth the sum you paid me earlier. One pair in the hundreds column. I see. This will be like a trading side quest. Beginning with the wool, you can trade for more, ever more valuable goods until you have something suitable to bargain with the, with for the saddle. It's a nice gesture, but you think I can turn a hundred pair into a million? That's ten thousand times more. We need 10,000 pal, not a million. So we are looking at a hundred times more. All right, a panic and got it confused with Arvino's million girl. <laughs> I'm not sure about this trading idea. You were almost talked into buying a cloak you didn't need in mere moments after you arrived. But it's. <sighs> I hate it when you're right. Then let me help you with your deal making. Oh, hello again. Uh, my blue. I work here as a ranch hand, but I've also learned a lot about the peddler profession. It's alright if I hate him now, yes? I guided the claimants towards the first step of the field, like you asked. 
As long as Bogdanovat goes alone to capture her parka, she is free to accept assistance from wherever she likes. Hooray! Let's see about getting you that settled then, third promise. I don't know why you made me your offer, but I could use an ally with a beak for Barkin. But come aboard, my blue. Should the best of us stay behind, perhaps? It might be easier to hack over prices without so many voices chiming in. Yes, I can pitch in with the ranch work. With Labrogan, I need extra hands to tend to the alpacas. Gladly. Although, Tamo, I think, should go with Fuglama. You see, the markets and bazaars the, uh, the world over, and surely have sage advice to share. In that case, you should also hold on to the alpaca wool. If it's misplaced or soiled in some way, you will have nothing to bargain with. As if I do such a thing. But I leave the wolf tumble right away. They're better to keep my hands free. So we will be the one doing the trading in the end. To begin, I suggest we try trading the wolf to have the settler. He won't agree to the deal, of course, but it will give us an idea of how much he will accept for his wares. I feel like more this whole thing is just like a trading side quest in disguise. They like intended it to be like all, all about trading in the end and just added the alpaca as a bonus. I will ignore these side quests for now because they're not like blue, uh, blue exclamation mark ones. The main story quest should give me enough levels anyway. Something I can do for you. You've come to bargain. I need one of your special taming saddles to catch a wild alpaca. A saddle, is it? And how will we be paying for it? This park's gift of fine alpaca wool. What do you as a lamb make uh, have for wool? Besides, this would barely cover the cost of a single strap buckle. Offer me something I actually want. And what might that be? Mesker, I like to nurse a cup, uh, nurse a cup at day, and while inspect my finished work, bring me a jug of quality stuff, and we've got yourself a deal. This was well fast, for a promise. Such mesker can be had uh, for only five pal in the thousand column. Hold on, uh, did you say for a promise? The offer has changed. The seller is going to cost you a jug of premium mescal. Age three years at least. Wow. Three years? The stuff is worth at 10,000 pearl or more. Why have you doubled the price? Because I must support the man of ambition who will see my business prosper. Suelja will go to war. and his career we need saddles. Lots of saddles. It's something personal for it, promise. But I won't sell you my graph for anything less than my asking price. Well, you won't need those saddles if you win the throne. Can't say that I blame him. I am known for championing peace, and peace is unlikely to bring in more customers. Not really. If this piece extends to other nations as well and establishes um, good relationships with them. Those of our grandparents' generation remember the dark days when the clans were at war. Many of these pale were brave for your victory, Wuklama. Young ones, though, 
Uh, the young ones, you know, to them, strife and bloodshed are as children's stories. They think themselves safe from these horrors and take the peace we now enjoy for granted. Also, by the way, why did they make this story so close to the current political situation? This is like also like a bit of a commentary to what is like currently happening, not gonna lie. So, Alice is satisfied with this great prosperity, in craft the future the second promise in missions. They've become obsessed with innovations like the dirigibles uh, have made trade swift and easy. They need to have those like heavily convinced that the first promise plans for Congress will afford them opportunities for great profit. I mean, in short term it will. But only for the short term. What about you, my blue? And you, you of the younger generation? At least you're too younger than me, I'd say. Oh, I was raised on the old tales. I've memorized the accounts of what it was like when the Yoku ruled our village. That's why I vote to help. I want you to become the down servant to keep our nation from going back to the way it was. Well then, I guess I better make sure I win the contest. But the type of mescal the saddle, um, the saddle maker wants is so very expensive. Weren't we expecting to need 10,000 pair from the outset? Nothing's changed, we just need to get on with it. I may not have a head of for trade or the stomach for alpacas, but I won't give up with the piece of Tully oil on the line. Then never will I. We will make you don't servant. And without the 10,000 pearl jug right away will only bring us failure and frustration. So let's first try exchanging the wool for anything, even a touch more valuable. The trick is to find someone who needs alpaca wool and is willing to trade at a loss to acquire it. Someone who supports your bid for the throne, for instance. Oh, we know the right person for that. Of course, the Weaver. Monarch was his name, I believe. We went out of his way to say he agreed with a mission, and he was here to buy wool. I think I remember the direction he was going, but for now, let's head back to the road where we first met him. Okay. I kind of want to find this even current here first, if it's to the south. It would also be nice to get these ether currents early on, since we will need them to unlock a uh, flight. Ah, there it is. I really like this better theme. Uh, 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 So, where would the next closest one be further down to the south? Okay, save that for later then. Just want to get this one because this one's close to our current objective.
This is the spot. After Bogdan talked to us, he walked off to the south. Then he was probably going to Ikov Ikovlo's Inn. The most visitors to Russian Pelo end up staying here. Let's go and check, shall we? Sure. Good boy. Tor is such a good boy. Can I have the best guitar, Mama? Here you go. Thanks. Now let's see if we can turn a profit. Well, look, I'm glad we found you. Are you interested in making a trade? I promise you, you wish to do business with me? Might I ask what this is all about? I see, so the goal is to turn a basket of into a jack of wheel or premium mascot. Then allow me to invest in your efforts. Peace and Tura is what allows me to cross freely into the lands of my suppliers. Naturally, I would prefer that one pledge to preserve the peace within the throne. Just to humbly offer you this Wu Poncho, the small token that I pray contributes to your victory. I already know where you're gonna where to sell this to. Ooh, this is a fine craftsmanship. A garment like that would easily fetch five pair in the hundreds column. That's very generous, Bonnock. Thank you. I promise I won't let you down. I have every faith in you, for promise. May fortune bless your future leanings. You can believe you couldn't trouble your investment with your first deal. You have to a spectacular star. Only because someone remembered our dear friend. All that was hand over the wall. That's not true. The connections you build with people are vital. This is one of the most fundamental precepts of trading. One which you've instinctively mastered. You, you think so? I know so. Now let's take our 500 pill punch and trade it for something even more valuable. Yeah, Tamamo, you take the puncher. If I lost it somewhere, Aaron really would never let me have the end of it. And then you would never let me hear the end of it. What's that? Our next deal is ready to be found. <laughs> Excellent trade. Sweet. So this guess to trade it 100 pale basket for a pack of wool for a 500 pale wool poncho. Did you just make a new animation for this trading crest? I'm guessing they will be reusing it for other stuff as well. Leveling connections is a sound strategy, but we should also consider supply and demand. An individual in urgent need of a good poncho will offer more than a merchant simply looking to stock his shelves. That makes sense, but how do we know if someone needs a poncho? Mm, with a fabulous sense of style. It's a nice dirty poncho, but the design is traditional. I don't think fashion is the part of its appeal. So only those people with practical need would be interested. Well, that's your presence, isn't it? We we'll look for a person without a poncho and hope that you get a buyer's. Yes, there you go. We find a demand of our supply. I mean, 
How are we supposed to know that it's not having an like, interesting design or anything? So where should we begin our search for the respective buyers? There are any number of places, but we could do worse than starting right here at the end. There might be interesting interested travelers. Um, who needs a poncho? A lot of Mama Ja hardly have anything to begin with. They are probably lens guards or sales boards. Mama Ja, who is also for a living, prefer not to wear much above the waist. They attempt with their movements. So even if they have bare shoulders, Mama Ja and carrying arms can be struck off the list. Can I like... Zoom in on them. Uh, I mean, it's the only one who is not uh, has any weapons and is not wearing a poncho. Let's see, no coat or cloak, but also no weapon. Hori might have a winner. Hi there, friend. You're not a missing retreat, right? I was curious about your bold choice of dress, or like thereof. Oh, it was no choice of mine, believe me. I was protected by bees on the way here and barely escaped with my scales intact. My coat was not so lucky. I'm actually a tomb maker from Tuyola and was dressed quite smartly. All the better to show the Pelu I'm a man who takes pride in his appearance and therefore his work as well. But now look at me. Well, sir, this is your lucky day. A splendid poncho. This would be perfect replacement for the course I lost. You'd be willing to part with it, if you'd like to make a trade. For one of your fine tools, perhaps? What about his headshot? I grabbed it myself and will watch for its quality. Hmm. This may look sharp. They have well made. At very add one pair in the thousands column. Hmm. Doubles, uh. Oh, from 500 to 1000. We have a deal. Double the value, only 10 times to go. Wonderful. A fine garment such as this should put me on even footing with any pillow merchant. Like the eponymous owner of Miplo Maid Garden, for one. He a few times to use Hatcher to harvest the maid. And I thought to impress her with the tool I sold you. No matter. Hey, what are you, sir? Glad I'm to have met you. Already giving us a tip where to sell the stuff to. Did you hear that? We have already found our next buyer. To me plus made again. We go. Yes, but it's a fair distance on foot. We should take a puckers. These ones will be the calm time, right? Probably. Sweet. Uh, wait, where are they? Ah, okay, right outside. Well done recognizing the tools maker as a potential customer. If you have a mind to change professions, you'd make an excellent merchant. Of course we would. Uh, yep. How do the hands look? Well, I'm fitting the camera at least. Do I prefer the one that I had before? Before we get moving, you should be the one to hold this. Ah, the headshot. Yeah, of course. Give it to me. 
With that, I suppose, suppose we should hop on the alpaca. Smart Blue has so kindly provided. Ready to go? Let's mount up. Sure. And it's off to the main fields we go. Please don't split. Please don't split. We'll be fine. These ones are accustomed to people. I still don't trust them. You have an egg for riding, no matter what you say. Without our packer friend, we pedal could have never become trading merchants. Can you imagine walking all the way across Toral? I mean, we, 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 at least we have plenty of mounts we could use. I swear that mountain is so tall to be here. Woko Somor, wasn't that your name? A forbidding aside, isn't it? One I've never appreciated up close. You have to take the long way around the cliffs to get there to the highlands belonging to the Yokhui. So, Mabru, you said you were uh, learning about the peddler profession. You don't care for inch work? No, no, I love it. I love working with alpacas. But becoming a peddler has always been a dream of mine. It's just, I'm not sure I have the talent for it. If I can help you by the taming set alone, then it'd be proof that I can do this after all. In that case, you'd best get ready for the beer merchant. Look, we're almost there. Oh, we're on the cocktail roster right there. We made it, and without a single smelly incident. I sent the alpacas back to Ecoflos Inn. So we walk along the main road and return to the village. Speaking of Rose Hotel, you were adopted by the Dawn Servant, weren't you, Fred Promise? That I was. Then perhaps you understand I was an orphan too, you see. Topley took me in. He took in all the ranch hands, actually. All of them? Yes, and everyone works hard at the cross. Grateful for the opportunity to repay the head ledger's generosity. Yet here I'm the only one wanting to go off and be a merchant. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm telling you this. We need to keep trading things to your settle if you to prepare for the Feast of Gold. As it's my harvesting season, they can't have too many quality hatchets. Add to the Buklamat's way with people, and we should have no trouble making a favorable deal. That's me blue herself over there. Pass the to the third promise, and let's get to bargaining. Alright. Do we have an ear current nearby? Check that first. Uh... Oh, yeah, right there, actually. Uh, let me pick that up first. Oh, actually, how do we get up there, though? Going around a bit, okay. Oh, yeah, there. Okay, 300 yards, that's a bit away. You have that little X for me. Here you go. Thanks, not to see what you can get for it. Right? 
you are Miblu, the owner of these fields. I have a mind to trade, if you're interested. Well, well, the third promise. I might be convinced to entertain a proposal. What do you have an offer? The hatchet, forged by seasoned artisan. The razor edge of this exceptional tool will make a light work of the crops. Hmm, the quality is acceptable, I suppose. If we are allowed sack of matter, at least in exchange. The sack of matter leaves this valued at one pound and a thousand color on the same price as the hatchet. The steel would bring us no closer to the massacre. If I may, Miss Blue, it's how the season is not, does not the demand for edges of for them a higher value. It is, is indeed the season. This is why I procured an ample batch of tools well in advance. If Mr. missed the window of demand, in that case we'll have to fall back on connections. Think of it this way, a generous tea here will put you in the third promise of good grace, sure it's worthy of consideration. I do not wish to give offense, but I must tell you that I stand with the second promise. His innovations will improve every aspect of our lives, I believe including farming. And I will no longer have the need of hatches. I assure you that I have nothing but respect for Vugnama, this is why I am prepared to purchase a spare hatchet at a fair price. I suppose it is fair given your reasons, but with yourself would be no better off the transaction. How about this then? If you were to help bring in your harvest, would it give us a better deal? As a matter of fact, I would. Until uh, corn as reforms come about, I can always use more ends in the fields. Then go in it and add our labor to the bargain. Add value to tip the scale, but how could I have forgotten one of the most basic rules of trading? You can rest here if you'd like, Mablu. Tom and I have a matter together. Oh no, I'm Mr. too. Off to the fields then, and might you pick the heaviest le heavy leaves? I will take five good bundles from each of you. Alright. Giving mother it is. Can we also like make it or like uh mother iced tea soda? Because also really nice. I actually had some earlier. <laughs> it is really good. I guess it was quick. You brought me some leaves done. There you go. Except the harvest. We see how your companions fared before I make any decisions though. We brought our shares as well. Thank you for promise. This is more than enough to hold up your end of the bargain. Now it's time to honor mine. After adding the value of your labor to the price of the hatchet, I'm prepared to offer you a full sack of our highest grade martyr leaves. Premium martyr! Bought at the shop. One sack of these leaves could cost no less than five pair in a thousand column. Then we can bid farewell to the hatchet. I will build a good home. Talk to the contest aside. I'm glad we could come to a mutual agreeable trade. As am I. All the best with the rest of your harvest. Mm -hmm. 
My blue, it's wrong. It's as I was saying before, even after everything Toby has done for me, I'm planning to abandon it all and become a merchant. But I needed your help after forgetting a basic rule of trade. How can I accept Toby to accept my decision then? Mm -hmm. Mention your plans to leave? Not exactly. I wanted to prove I could succeed as a peddler before I declared my intentions. I seek to follow in my father's footsteps, but not because he expected expects it of me. I want to preserve Tural's peace and become dancer. Uh, becoming dancer happens to be the best way to do it. You should live for a life of your own choosing, and I wouldn't be surprised if Tobi held the same opinion. So talk to him. You're right. It's better to find out for sure than worry over what he might say. Thank you for the advice. But first, we have a cell to buy. I want, I want the success under my belt, so I can be sure of my decision. What's next then? We try to trade our tier leaves for something halfway to 10,000 pair. No, I think we are close enough now. I say we go straight for the premium mascara. Bugging our way into the double the value, eh? Think you can do it? Trust me, I will make this trade work. I admire you for promise. That you holding your own against such strong competition for the throne is inspiring. Uh, am I really holding my own against Kohana and Sorosha? I mean, of course I am. I'm Buklamat of the Dawn's Promise, after all. Sweet. Before we go, let me give you the matter leaves. I don't need to risk brewing Erebus Point. <laughs> right then, our next stop is the Mescal uh, Distillery. Since we're gonna go through the wilds anyway, let's try to go find an even current somewhere around here. I must stay up here in case it might be up here. Yep, it is. So, the next one is straight to the south. Hopefully not behind the mountain ridge. So with like just 200, uh, about 200 arms, I don't think so. Uh, that's what I wanted. 
Okay, the next one that picks up is to the south beyond the mountain ridge, so we can get her. At least not f from this area. <laughs> Come on. I feel like there might be some one more to the north there. Yep, in the northeast. Let's find that one then. Oh, there's also freight going on. How much progress is made in it? Oh, do we get a tank for this here? Sweet. We need to get up further here first. Mm. I'm already up. Yeah, okay, I see it. Hello there. Oh, oh. Yep, yeah, okay, that's fine for us. Okay, and also it's at the perfect height for the look at it now. Uh, yep, I'll just turn it to you. Sweet. I also need to do a short toilet break here again, so we were back. And we are already back. Let's see, is there like actually been any blue check mark crests here? No. Oh, okay. Sometimes evil currents are also like hidden behind blue check mark quest, that's why I'm checking. Well, uh, we want to speak with a man by the name of Gobbly. 
You are among his fellow dissolists, he is regarded as a master of the craft. He knows the values of his product, so if we are to convince him to trade for twice what the leaves are worth, you're going to need targeted information. That means asking around and taking in the gossip. You could talk to the people here in the distillery town. Perhaps Huglamat could do the same at the village entrance. We now head to the north side and see what I can learn. Alright! The information can really get us once more. Usually it's always free people. Me? I'm a chef from Toriola. I often come here to buy Goblin's Mascal, the finest in Toriola, according to my customers. It always brings out a drug during our dealings, but I can't tell the stuff to wear myself. It takes more zips. Not going to be impolite, you understand, but still end up so L as to agree to whatever price it crowds me. It would be nice to have less uh, potent refreshments during such a conversation. Well, I might have to seriously reconsider our arrangements. Huh. Okay. There's not much I can say about Gobbly, but I can tell you what Gobbly's been saying. The other day, he was muttering about monsters prowling around Agaf Jars, this the field where they give ingredients for the massacre. The presence has made it harder to procure said ingredients and thus driven up the price of his product. A boom, some might argue, but it's hard to celebrate when it affects the work as, a, as it does. Can't really bring you joy to people if you can't keep making the thing they love. So you get a, like one content with the other girl, the other thinks it's getting too pricey, so we gotta offer an alternative, which we can which we can give him. Goblin might be a deft at hand at distilling, but he has got no sense when it comes to appearance. Rumors has it he has even been invited to the palace for business negotiations. If he presents himself to the court wearing his usual rumble up tile, um, though, he'd be loved out of some perch. Hmm. Wait. There she is. So what did you find out? No, oh, we can meet with all these tidbits. The deal is as good as sealed. As when we found out where Gobbly is working, there's a mist on at the top of the slope behind this territory. You can go ahead and I'll bring Glamat. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Gobbly. You have business with me, madam. Why don't you talk uh, down below so as not to distract the alpaca from his work? <laughs> okay. Now, what's this about? Keep it brief if you would, I'm a busy man. We are in the market of a three-year-old jug of premium mezcal, assuming you have one on hand, that is. Ah, an excellent choice. I must warn you, though, it doesn't come cheap. We don't have Pell, but we can offer a sack of martyr leaves in exchange. It's a top-grade stuff, like the mezcal. No dear, martyr leaves are well and good, but I don't have any use for them. No dear, just like that. Still, I'd hate to send you away empty ended. Why don't we sit and chat a while over a cup of Nesca? Now the real bargaining begins. Which of our cards do we want to play first? The bag just is tasty for a strong, strong trend. I appreciate his hospitality, but I'm afraid I can't hold my drink. 
I forgot one of your actor customers, a uh, hobby go chef, is the same. Seeing as not everyone can enjoy mescal, I wonder if you might benefit from having other refreshments to offer. Something like mother tea, for instance, and brewed from the finest leaves, of course. Are you right? Absolutely right. I had noticed a growing reluctance on the part of my hobby go friend. But did not realize uh, I myself was to blame. I must endeavor to be a better host. Still, even with the added value of mine, the sack of leaves is worth the mess call you're after. Should you have a color master causing them trouble? Not yet. We keep that cut up our seats until we need it. As I expected you were aware, the right of succession is currently taking place. That's why the Fed promise has graced us with her presence. When the cause has decided, the subsequent uh, ascension ceremony and banquet will be a prestigious affair. If your massacre were to be served there, it will bring out a story and measurable fame. Wait, could it be that your rumored invitation to the palace is to be discussed at very possibility? As a matter of fact, yes, I must admit, I'm still reeling from the abruptness of it all. I will be carried on an opportunity if I can secure the deal. But I should think your exceptional massacre should speak for itself. That said, there's no such thing as being too prepared. And first impressions last. You want to be wearing your very best when you walk into Valor Chance, huh? It was such a shame to miss the chance of a lifetime simply of one of proper garments. That it would, as in if garments to offer, something ideal for court. We have no garments on hand, I'm afraid, but we can provide you with the next best thing, an introduction to a weaver. His name is Paul Nock, and his works are highly regarded to the Yola. As a supporter of Uglamad and keen observer of palace politics, he would obviously be happy to guide you in the selection of an outfit to fit this golden occasion. This is only a tempting proposal, and one of which I should like to take full advantage, but this case still I'm quite balancing. Say, we're never monsters running amok in Agave Jaws. That's a problem we could easily solve for you. Truly? I would be most grateful for your immediate assistance. I was resigned to hiring sales to clear them out. Factoring the safe expense and an introduction to a trusted reroll, this is shaping out to be a sound bargain, alright? You have a deal. Yes, I knew you'd come around. Give us a moment in time and I will take care of these sprawling nuisances. In the meantime, I will use the time to pen an introductory letter to Bolnock. The fields you're looking for are just north of Shumpello. Be safe. Alright then, monster fighting it is. Ah, okay. Near we looked for the evil current earlier, as it so happens, but I. Uh, I'm gonna refresh my chocobo timer. That should be Agatha, just over there. This will go faster if we split up. Come and find me once you finish getting out your share of beasts. Alright. This should be easy.
Basically, I'm just like using the toggle to speed up the process. I'd give it some EXP, but uh, but we already had it. I shouldn't feel like there's like any threat it is. Those are like just really easy monsters. And not even that many to begin with. Compared to creatures I with Papa, this was no challenge at all. I equipped that. Come on, let's head back to the distillery. All that's left is to give Marblu the sack of leaves so he can see a little year. Alright then. Let's finish this one up. This must have been no trouble for you, it seems. Now, if I could just have the sack of leaves. Thank you for looking after our precious trading goods. Your most problem has been resolved, Master Gobbly. Here are the matterlies and the written introduction to Bornock as agreed. Then the deal is done. Here, your check is Prima Muscle H3. Yes, Flix is accepted with my compliments. Yes, we finally have the Muscle. Great work, especially you, Mablu. You were the one that inspired me to come this far, for a promise. But let's not celebrate until we have the saddle in hand. Blablu, is it? You try for a bargain, young peddler. I look forward to doing business with you in the future. Thank you. But truth be told, I'm just a ranger, and for now, should I ever become a proper merchant, though, I'll be back to strike more years with you. Alright then. We should be getting all settled. Mm. Okay. Even with the pellets, I don't think I've had a 10,000 pell check of anything before. My hands won't stop shaking. Here, you better hold onto it until we get to the settle maker. Yeah, we don't want you to drop the drug, definitely. It would be quite a big expensive loss. <laughs> Can you imagine if we dropped it and had to start all over again? Luckily, Heavless Place is not far. We just need to head across the plaza. Mablu, it wouldn't be that funny, really. I really love it there, to be honest. This is it. The trade we've been working towards. Ooh, still in one piece. Right, time to make our deal. Uh, 
Get a tooth for settler. We've brought your precious massacre. Wait, you actually got your hands on a jug? But yet, nothing. A few music clumps of rule. Wariat was an aspiring trader with a gift for negotiation. Oh. Although it's sooner aid no claim in Bald Soroja, I cannot go against the guiding principles of the Palo Palo. A trade is a fair one. A craft is a draft, I promise. Great. Say invade if you like. I will have all the requisite, uh, requisite materials, so this won't take long. Even get so an express deal out of it. Spoiled. Your commission is ready. Catching a wider pucker is never a simple affair, but you will have an easier time of it with one of my saddles. Now, if you don't mind, I have other works as needs finishing. I can taste the smooth massacre already. We did it! The saddle is ours. Hooray! And think it's all out with only a hundred pearl basket of alpaca wool. Probably you're going to be an incredible merchant. Thank you, it makes me uh, so glad to hear you say that for a promise. We've got what I came for. So let's return to the ranch. The others will be waiting. Ah, that's what you're mainly using it for. Okay. Success, you traded 10,000 pearl. We must go for time. Settle. So we're gonna trying to actually accomplish feats for our land, I guess, to give some uh, accomplishments under the belt of Luke, you could say. You're quite a sinner, then. Yes, and thanks in no small part to Mablu. Before you rush off to catch an alpaca, though, let me teach you how to sell one. I'll bring out one of our wildborn friends so you can practice. I know, I know. This is something I need to learn. Great sunken gods, I did it. How do you seem buffered? Much less inclined to spit. As if he was completely accepting of Wuklemar's touch. This is because of the singular scent with which the saddle has been coated. Alpacas find it very soothing. You know, I've never taken a good long look of one before, well, of one of you before, but you're actually kind of cute. <laughs> you're only noticing that now. Zaroja, he's back. The fuck? Have you done exactly what he set out to do? 
Is that Pagari he's brought? Is it just me or is it Chloe? Of tales of such a beast, they say the Golden Apaka lives a solitary existence deep in the valley, where it shuns the company of both men and its own kind. How did he manage to snare a prize like that? A beast knows its barriers. Faced with overwhelming strength, it will yield rather than risk death. An apt illustration of how greatly the power of the first promise exceeds yours, Buklamath. Stank alone won't win him our father's throne. I'll be the one to find the Golden City, and then Toral can remain at peace. An everlasting desire for peace can only be forged in the fires of war. To unite as one, the people must be taught. They must suffer the horror and the hopelessness firsthand. Exhaustion from prolonged conflict, the wages of war, or merciless in nature. These are what moved the clans to join in the founding of Tuliol all those years ago. Consider the younger generation of this village. Since birth, have they bask in unbroken harmony and behold? They regard one not as a tragedy, but opportunity. Thus does, uh, thus does the reside and son seek to provide education. He offers much needed lessons in the realities of conquest and a renewed appreciation for peacetime. It is true that war's misery breeds a longing for peace. But I have seen with my own eyes what becomes of an empire forged through the violence you propose. The rebellions it spawned, and the ruins it left behind. Galamod. The Guardian Empire was a congregation of simpletons. They are obsessed for back against their oppressors as well as they should. Men are not beasts. Only a fool would seek to over all with the threat of force alone. This is why Guruja did not Gurujaja did not elevate the Mamoja, why he treated all clans with equal respect. However, the first promises has his gaze fixed upon more distant horizons. He would unite not only Toriolel, but the star in its entirety. What? Why? I need to explain myself to you. Oh, well done. Well done, indeed. The first promise has completed the feat of gold with an appropriately golden flourish. We we'll present to you your much-deserved keystone. He's always been like that. Having sharing his innermost thoughts with me, or even with Koana. It's like we are not even family. I ponder Zorja in this mystery slider. Right now, I need to think about fi finishing the feet of gold. I have my saddle. Practice how to use it to lead on to where the wild alpacas roam. The valley of Urun Kansa is no fest of here. Come on, everyone, even if we can't enter ourselves, we can see Wuklamad of Unherent. Alright. Let's head in. We can appreciate the scenery here more today, to be honest. 
Also is it ice on, po uh, on top of the mountain? It looks like so crystalline. To be honest. It looks more like it is like a big ice block to be honest. I can do this. I know I can. Chion Muglamad, as she marshals her courage to attempt the harrowing task of capturing a wider pucker. about alpacas I'd rather not go near one if I can help it but if I'm to rule this nation then I'll need to learn how to live with them Tural is their home too right I'm off So shall we head back to the ranch or I stay here? As will I. What Clamart is alone in this. The least we can do is stand watch and await her return. Waiting an instant. It may be a while yet. Help me pitch the tent. <laughs> Enjoy your Pepsi. Trust a gleaner to come prepared for anything. I'm actually sure for my train too. Someone whose job it is to travel the world and procure uncommon things for their employers. Erinville specializes in finding animals, I believe. But aren't you a Shetona from Shaktura? Why did you cross the salt? Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if Erinville also once had like to procure one of these golden alpacas himself and actually did that. I really wouldn't be surprised about it. When I was much younger, the thought of leaving Tural never even occurred to me. First, that's not a word, that's a phrase. And why are you. Why are you taking pride in, like, saying, uh, Ich bin ein Berliner? But then, some years ago, my mentor tasked me with a difficult hunt. Please don't be a jelly for the donut. <laughs> Those are still only gears in the end, you know. Something I could never find, she said. So long as I clung to the familiar. She suggested that I leave home, leave Turar, and join the cleaners of Sarnium. As one of their number, 
I could experience the world, immerse myself in myriad cultures and customs, see the many faces of nature. And once I had learned what is truly important, I would find that which I seek. My younger self took those words to heart, and off I went to become a gleaner. Her words alone moved you to leave behind everything you'd ever known? You must have great respect for your mentor. As it happens, cleaner work was much to my liking. And I all but forgot why I had pursued it in the first place. Yet, events conspired to put me back on the trail I'd abandoned. Wait. Are you saying you were tasked with finding this city of gold? I was. And though my hunt is now entangled with the right of succession, I mean to see it through. Hmm. You're gonna see. Well then, I understand completely. We all have our reasons for seeking the Golden City. Hmm. Which is all the more reason for us to work together. <laughs> Just so. Let's see how long it will take for this. and arrange a search party. I oh, should be fine. Wait. Do you hear that? <laughs> I did it. <laughs> I wish I was just, I'm trying, uh, looks like she's still a god. Some spit in the end. spent, in small wonder. Well done, third promise. The ranch isn't going anywhere. Take a rest in the tent. I think I will. Thank you all for believing in me. Sweet. I was so relieved to have rooms came back to us safely. And the alpaca she tamed is a heavy looking beast. Sure, this will be enough to satisfy the feast of gold. Ah, let's take the ice Buddha, I guess. Walk the master seems a bit unsteady on your feet. Hard and spicing after you spend the night chasing alpacas. You know what will melt away fatigue like magic, though? A mother tea. I run to the ranch and get a pot brewing. The way you can make your time, and the tea will be ready when you arrive. As my be so it just that we shall set a low, slow pace for our exhausted for promise. Yep, the league can fly there, yeah. Thanks to not having olive occurrence yet.
Can't make out of the others, did you? I should hurry along with the tea then. Wuglamat can't be that far behind. Oh, that tea oil is magical. I feel better already. I see you've become more comfortable around our fussy friends. Watching this one taught me a lot about alpacas. What crisis and fruits they eat, what sounds they react to, the adorable little crooks. I guess I've grown kind of fond of them. <laughs> she finally came around to her alpacas, I guess. I come back for a promise. Accomplished defeat a god, have you? Yes, there's no mistaking a valley alpaca. I commend you on your success. Well done. Yay, we did it. Although, I couldn't find the shiny one like so did. <laughs> this looks so stupid, to be honest. I'd be surprised if you had. Golden packers are born but once every few decades. They are elusive, a solitary creature that are rarely seen, much as captured. Thanks to their innate physical and magical gifts. Only a single other person is known to have called on before, that being Gulu Jacha himself. But was chasing alpacas too? So my grandfather's story say. It was before the founding of Tuliola, in a time when the mountain giants, the Yokyu, held our people in. Compared by the overlords, our forebearers were wider pagamas to the highlands to deliver gifts of food and other tributes. Those were uh, wretched. Those were wretched days to recall this tale. Then along came the young Guru Jaja, yet unburdened by the mantle of Dawn Servant. Our oh, people were amazed by his imposing two headed figure, equal to the Yokyu and Satcher, and passed by his entourage of mismatched companions. Huh. Some people didn't feel believing a new conqueror had come. Yet Guru Jaja showed no such inclination. They sat and spoke with us, sipping from the cups of mild tea we offered him in Kuru Samba when he learned of our blight. No one could have anticipated what the ambassador decided to do next. Guru Chacha ascended the cliffs to face the giants and freed the Palo Palo from the York Yu's subjugation. And then turned an embracing eye upon our riders and proposed we take on the road to battle our beverages. The suggestion seemed obvious for one who traveled as he did, intent on fostering enmity between the clans. So it was that a few words from Guru Jaja transformed us into a clan of itinerant merchants. I've never heard that uh, Born Papa Forge with the Palo Palo was spoken of in that way before. The saga is not so detailed. Then you may not know that Guru Jaja sought a sure footed guide for his trek up onto the highlands, thus, did he capture a golden alpaca. So both my brother and my father called the rabies of creatures, while an ordinary one was the best I could manage. The feat required no more than that, it's a fair promise, and you brought back a perfectly wonderful beast. My is right, you're a perfectly wonderful beast, if anyone's ordinary, it's me. Not only did you accomplish the Feast of Gold, you also made many trades and brought joy to many people in true Pedo Pedo fashion. I sorely doubt your sibling could have achieved the same result. You should be proud of the accomplishment which earned you your keystone.
So this is what they look like. Go on, is that in the tablet? Yay! A perfect fit that leaves six more. You're well on your way, Foot Promise. We'd have been lost without you, my blue. Thanks to learn and learn so much about the Peru people and your customs. It might seem obvious, but I've come to realize the importance of properly knowing something. It was because I didn't understand the Puggers that I was uncomfortable around them. I'm thankful to you as well, Wuklamat. You've given me the courage to say what I wasn't sure I could ever say. Tobli, I want to leave the ranch and become a merchant. I appreciate everything you've done for me and I've loved every moment of caring for the alpacas. But this is something I need to do. I need to walk my own path and make my own traits. As your parents, allow me to say one thing. I've always tried to give my world's lives filled with as much happiness as I could provide. I had never once ever wanted it to be the only happiness you knew. You have my blessings to walk any path you choose, Mablo. It gladdens me to hear you have found the calling you wish to pursue with such passion. You will make an exceptional peddler, I am sure of it. Thank you, Tobley. What did I tell you, my blue? There's one last thing I can help you with, I promise. You need to find the Golden City, right? That's the end goal. The interest is to talk with the Yokui. They once ruled over far more than just Uku Pasha and the Pelu Pelu. A thousand years ago, they were the overlords of Yuktura and all of its people. During that era, the Pelu Pelu were commanded to search for a city of gold. They scoured every corner of the continent, but never found any trace of that fabled place. But if they didn't find anything, that co what could the Yokui have to tell us? They may not have found it, but the fact that they were for to look for it at all makes me curious. Perhaps there's value in delving into how the legend originated. We lose nothing from asking the questions. Besides, if we're determined to follow the path of the saga, we'll be visiting the giants eventually. Oh, cry, I have a question I've been meaning to ask, and since you finished with the feed, where did you cry that earring? My earring? Did you recognize it? Yes, pieces just like it first became fashionable in Tokyo right around 20 years ago. Since then, it became common to wear one as a charm for safe travel. 20 years ago, right about the time my grandfather made his journey, did the dawn servant imply the earring was connected to the Golden City in some way? Surely there was more to its significance than simple fashion. If you want to know how it first came to be crafted, I could try to find out. Seeing as it's a regular seller for many merchants, I'm curious to learn about it myself. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Jumping feet first into petal business, eh, my blue? Right then, let's head back to Toliola and get ready to search for the next elector. Farewell for now, and thanks for all your help. I will become Dawn Zeron, so make sure you set aside your best masculine for the occasion. She has a fearsome opponent in her brother of hers. He even brought a golden alpaca to heal.
But you've heard Zorosha's supporters talk. They might see opportunity in his expansionist ambitions, but they find the man himself intimidating, terrifying even. Reyes have grown to love Fuklamad. Everyone she meets will come to love her too, and that's why she will win the throne. You might be right, my blue. You might be right. If he's good to have the feet of gold safely under our belt, even if my victory appears beside Soroja and his shiny golden alpaca. I know a shot in that bar me and good snow you've been also supportive. But I want to be strong, or wise like my brother, to be a promise that people respect. Which is not likely if I stand here carrying on and on about things. Let's move on. Back to Jabaliad. Here with us, the contest has hardly begun. Yep. But I would say, before we finish up that quest, we will do the side quest here first. Just to get him out of the way, at least like these two blue runs. But I will also save these for the next stream when we will be hopping back into Final Fantasy XIV. With that being said, though, let's check if you find someone to read. Ah, uh, let's go there. Oh, actually, we have a really right target to go for. Definitely a very easy right target to go for. There you go. We are gonna be writing Anna. Also, um, since I was speaking about Anna, in case you did have not seen it, I was part of um, Anna's birthday stream last week. And there also is a VOD up for it if you want to catch it. We have been playing a Wii game together. Um, with another third person. So you can go check that out if you want to. Other than that, I hope you liked me watching along, enjoying the trailer in Final Fantasy XIV. And I hope you want to see me do more of it, because I'll definitely be doing that. <laughs> so yeah. I appreciate support, and I appreciate the feedback, so you can leave that as well in the future. And be nice over there and great. As always, we always want to be bringing happy vibes to the people we raid. I'm always saying, we we'll see each other next time. Other than, bye bye.